welcome back everybody to the broadcast gg desk i hope you enjoyed your break because we're very excited to bring you some more overwatch action and oh boy is it two teams that you were not expecting to be into the losers bracket it is goats the goats team versus dogman akita i know there's a few dogman teams but this one's the akita one losers bracket round three the loser goes home does not go to trials does not advance to go the winner moves on to face arctic in the loser semifinals, where again it's it does not guarantee you trials you still have to grind all the way there but you guys have seen goats on the broadcast we're going to start with you frito what do we need to know about goats well the first thing they've won the last two seasons of open division so this is a team that has a storied history and it would be quite remarkable if they don't end up making trials falling here the game that we saw earlier against phase two had me a little bit worried for their team play because yeah. they seem to still be playing the Moira, which is what they kind of ran over everybody with their... How many teams have a team cop named after you? You know what I mean? These guys are really it's famous for this style of play, right? It's like the only team that's ever done it, right? But my question is, can old goats learn new tricks? Because I don't think the Moira is cutting uh, up against uh, on a play of um, uh, the recent meta because Antinade shuts down what Moira does uh, so well. And another thorn in their side, unfortunately, is that for whatever reason, we're not exactly sure, but one of their star players, Bustio, isn't going to be playing here today. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt to that because they already seemed a little bit off kilter against Phase 2. But I want to point out, Phase 2 is probably the team to beat in the tournament so far. So losing to anybody, it's most honorable, I think, dropping to them. And Hurix, uh, let's get a quick uh, round wrap up of Dogman Akita before we get into the Bustio situation. What do we need to know about Dogman Akita? Well, there's a lot of talk about uh, the guys on this roster, right? I mean, you have Swimmer, where there's been a lot of discussion about him on the come up, Majesty uh, being on that team right there. But I mean, Chrono Dota and Kevin are the guys that I'm looking at here on this roster because Kevin, he made it to the final 12 of uh, the Team Canada roster, really solid player, certainly got to keep your eye on him. And Chrono Dota has just been on that uh, uh, like that Overwatch path to pro grind this entire time. You know, I remember back years ago when he had a, a tryout where he was actually still playing main support on Team Sellout, made it onto Rockets Esports, uh, you know, Team of Snow, LCG, Conga Esports over in uh, a uh, AUS as well. I mean, this guy has really, really driven it home, uh, really grinding away. I think he's got a lot of talent. I think he brings a lot to the table because of his past as well. Being that Lucio player, he's going to be able to bring a lot of that macro play, going to be able to shot call a lot. That's something I remember him from him actually playing alongside him as well. Um, so I'm really looking at Chrono Dota here as well to come through. But I think the real, real impact right now is Majesty. He was on GOATS last season. He was their Moira player. That is kind of a problem. That is a pain point right now for GOATS is that flex support role. What are they going to play and, you know, how are they going to execute it? And then, I mean, how is how is Majesty knowing what they're doing and how they play going to impact how Dogma and Akita adapt to GOATS? That's that's such a good point. Majesty being on the other team not only was a pivotal part as the support for the GOATS comp that they invented, but I bet Majesty knows the issues, that this the weaknesses of this team, what they can't run, what they can run, communication issues, do they tilt easily, are they composed, and Majesty can exploit all of that by telling his, his team about that. But Frida, we should get back to your point, a very important point on the side of, uh, of GOATS as well is that Bustio is not playing. This was was a huge carry DPS for the team and we got a word that it's going to be Biz Zenith who is going to be replacing him where he actually plays support so we have three supports playing onto goats what sort of an impact is the uh replacement of Bustio going to have I think it's definitely going to pigeonhole them and the type of compositions they can run because you really don't want to bend uh, the capabilities of the players on your roster to try to run something that is a bit too uh, mechanically intensive, especially. So I think we're going to see probably even more Reinhardt or tried and true Reinhardt team compositions out of goats today. Uh, it was a big issue up against um, uh, phase two where more was sleeping the Sombra play. And in, in general, just the Sombra play wasn't really baffling uh, phase two. So in some ways it may be a positive if they, cut things down to basics instead of try to outplay themselves and be too inventive with their strategies, but it also may uh, force them to play a more simplistic style. So we'll have to see how that pans out.
I think as a counterpoint to that real quick, I, I mean, I think that may actually embolden the fact that Majesty does have that experience. If they do go back to basics, that really just empowers Majesty's knowledge of the team. So I think that could be a factor here. There's a, a lot going on with GOATS. We actually saw them on the pro broadcast previously where they were running that 303 except with Ana. And now I want to ask you boys about the integration of Ana, the, the impact of supports in this meta Hurix. What is the importance of having a good Ana on your team? I mean, it's it's probably more important than ever at this stage. I mean, especially when you're going up against GOATS, who you know likes to run a lot of Moira, when you have that Biotic Grenade to get those anti-heals in as well. Um, I, I think that's going to have a profound effect, especially knowing that Majesty can play that, you know, certainly, and that we've seen GOATS struggle pulling that out. Um, I think that could be something where it could actually be a hard counter here to GOATS if they don't adapt quickly. Well, Frida, do you agree with that? I think whoever gets more Ana value and you need to play her in order to do that is going to win this match. And I, I'm getting confirmation that we do have that coming up for you. So I'll let you take it away. All right. Our two casters today will be Panda and Rich Red. We're going into our first map of this best of five. Lee Zhang Tower. Loser goes home. Winner goes against Arctic GG, which actually would be a rematch of a Dogman Akita. They're, that's the team that sent them into the loser's bracket. Panda and Rich Red, I'll let you take it away with Lee Zhang. Hello, hello, and again, welcome. It is exciting to be back. Panda, we're looking to see GOATS once again here to see how they can fend off against this team. It'll be interesting. Dogs versus GOATS, who's hurting who, which animal learns better. I like the uh, like the joke that Frito gave us on the desk. Can GOATS learn new, can old GOATS learn new tricks? Can the dogs continue on this decimation path towards their path to pro and making open division for their trials run? I'm very excited to see how the substitution in here for Bustio on the side of goats, how they're going to end up running over the enemy team, but they're not going to be switching anything up anytime soon, I can only imagine. And I'm, it's really going to be interesting, you know, as the desk said, how they are going to adapt to this and how critical it is to have the Ana. And with both of these teams going to use that critical puzzle piece in this overall display that we're going to have, you know, 10 seconds here to see who is actually going to start, you know, really pushing against this team. And I mean, I honestly am hoping that GOATS from that last experience they already had against Phase 2, that they're going to be able to change it up here. A lot of good points coming from the desk as well. Things that they can learn off of is the overaggression from Gator. And you can see on your screen already, Ecor is going to be coming out here on the Ana. Both teams going to be meeting eye to eye here. This is Control Center on Li Jing Tower. But you can see Dogman already holding down the W key, just going in to the GOATs. And they looking to force them back, still maintaining that high ground position, keeping a good solid defense here, wanting to try and rotate down to the main point since it will become active in five seconds. Still getting some great coverage, nobody getting picked off. The Earth Shatter finally going to come out, only getting one. It looks like they are going to have to retreat out of there, only one member getting picked off. No one still being able to exploit that Earth Shatter, though. Still trying to fall back. They allowed them to take it. They're not overcommitting right now. Gator getting close to having this ultimate right now. That Earth Shatter is going to be crucial if they can find it. Does manage to get one, two, actually. It will be a Graviton to follow up with the buy on a grenade from both sides. See if they can isolate them away from it. 15% and still climbing here for Dogman as they're now going to be completely pressed off this point with Goats cleaning house right now. Goats absolutely learning from their past mistakes. Gator's actually about to have another Earth Shatter here in a minute, Rich. They literally just won that team fight convincingly off of that previous one. Anti-grenades coming through both from Majesty and Ecor, creating space for their team to hold and go down and forward. The Graviton Surge from Sid definitely defined the rest of that, but Gator throwing down this second Earth Shatter doesn't find much besides a Nano Boost Chrono Dota in his face. But the Graviton is going to find a lot here with the buy on a grenade landing as well. Kevin going to follow up here with the self-destruct, completely pushing them back, and now going to look to turn this around with only one member. Beautiful Sleep Dart, and that's going to be a turnaround here. Yeah, Majesty... Proper nano boost right on a Chrono Dota. Did not need to use that Earth Shatter as they're walking in here. They're gonna have a sound barrier to defend this with a whole bunch of armor hidden underneath. You can see Saucy so much charge. Those armor bits go under right underneath the shield for Zarya. So that damage and that health is just so hard to deal with. But when uh when Biz ends up pulling out this rally, the sustainability is gonna be for GOATS to set up their next play as well. With a nano boost now, gonna go on to Biz, moving up on the high ground. They have a sound barrier as well, coming back by Dogman with a self-destruct high overhead. Not gonna claim any kills here, trying to go down to the low level, tucking them into the back, seeing if they can get one member completely taken out. Gator almost in a difficult spot, does finally go down by Saucy as they're looking to keep this, even though 53% still climbing here for Dogman, keeping on this fight as now they get the nano boost. It's gonna come out with a Graviton, seeing if they can turn it, but will be locked down themselves, trying to push them back again and looking to still hold strong here. 
32% switching it back. Now it's in favor of Goat, seeing if they can keep it going. With this momentum, they want to hold on to it, but really back and forth right now, Dogman still trying to turn it, and the Earth Shatter coming out on the high ground to lock down Gator, taking out that, but now gonna use it in return, immediately blocked by the shield, not gonna be able to hold it back and forth for both of these teams with those rapid fire Earth Shatters keeping it alive, wanting to turn it back. They're finally looking to do so. 61% to 54 and still climbing in favor of GOATS. Five members to one right now as they finally turn it back with Dogman claiming it. And Chrono Dota was probably feeling a little angsty there, getting stuck inside the Graviton Surge with the Nano Boost, unable to do any damage from Saucy's grab, but they're gonna be able to recreate that magic here momentarily. You can see Majesty on this Ana, getting so many heals off on the tanks of Kevin, Chronodota, and Saucy. He's about to have another nano boost, and Saucy has a Graviton Surge coming in here, so Goats need to be careful, but they need to take it convincingly. And another Graviton coming out, used on the front line to lock down Goats with a self-destruct coming in back, needing to be careful, does manage to get one, but the Earth Shatter with a nano boost again on Dogmans. They are just constantly holding strong here with 90%. One last opportunity to even get back, and I'm not sure if they're gonna make it here. The pack of the Dogmen are holding so strong that nobody's going to be able to make it there in time. Lucio Boop back. Tensa was the one hope to make it there in time, but a well-placed right-click from Swimmer will not allow him to do so. A lot of good takeaways coming from this first match here on Control Center so far. Rich, uh, I gotta say, just proper tank play coming through from both these teams. Gator definitely learning that he needs to stick with his team to shield off from those biotic grenades that Majesty is tossing at them, but Igor's coming to live on his own. What those biotic grenades do in particular is they just shut down so much healing from a multitude of targets that we know have much 3-3 does rely on all that's over-sustained healing, that it just allows the tanks to hold all of their, all of their damage output behind the speed boost of their Lucios, and it just happens so quickly. That's what 3-3 does best. But we're moving over to Gardens, again, where you see most Fars come out to play. No team opting out for that. It's still the same mirror matchup that we had from previous stage. 25 seconds until the control point becomes active. We are looking for an intense fight here to come in that back region just behind the control point in this tight corridor. Seeing if they can get some pressure, manages to do so. Bionic Grenade already landing onto two. Seeing if they can get this Dogman team away from this point, but they are starting to still gain a two advantage. Now getting a third onto Arai, picking off that frontline tank and forcing Goats away. And they're going to have to really try to reevaluate this because they're having the same struggles right now that we've seen prior. It's just a really good auto play coming out from Majesty as well. And you can see how the tight knit group of the Dogman Akita, they have been working so well for this, or so hard rather, for this exact moment in time. Chrono Dota is going to be able to set up so wonderfully by all the heals that Majesty is providing him. And it just enables Saucy and Kevin to do as much damage as humanly possible. But the one thing that we have to keep in mind is that Sid is actually having more charge to the Graviton Surge here. And it could be a definitive factor, but not when you get Earth Shatter by Chrono. And it is going to take out that support. They can't have that right now. They're going to be forced back. A follow-up here on the DMEC as well. Taking out Tensa on the support. Another reset here as they continue to dominate in this backline. And again, you saw Majesty far away in the back section across the brig bridge throwing those grenades again. And this is the same problem that we're going to be seeing from the Ghosts. If they have no way of getting to Majesty to shut down those heals with Biotic Grenades, the Sleep Darts even from Majesty, there's going to be so much sustainability going across the board for the Dogmen. And speaking of sustainability, Ice is going to go ahead and pull out that Rally nice and early. Biz is only 40% shy to his Rally, so the Armor Favor is definitely in the favor of Dogmen. And the Graviton is going to come into the wall, pulling them together, trying to see if they can take them down. But an Earth Shatter locking down one. Kevin going to get DMEC, trying to follow back. Still in favor of Goats right now, since they do have the DMEC advantage. Starting to get pressure. The Bionic Grenade lands, though. Arai is going to lose the mech. Self-Destruct is going to come out, but the Rally now looking to push. They want to get on this point. They need to turn it back, seeing if they can get some aggressive hold into the back line. Goats still having the advantage, but we do have the remake now onto Kevin. They're getting back into this fight. Doing a great job by Biz, though, getting a double. Gator following up onto Majesty. They finally got the support here. 80% for Dogman as they're looking like they're going to lose it. One member still trying to just buy some time here as they need to get this DMAC, killing as much as possible to see if they can get a full regroup now. Finally dealing with the Pilot Diva, Gator is going to convincingly hold his team strong to flip over the point, but if they lose one more team fight here, Rich, it's not going to be looking good here for Gardens on Goats. They're going to be able to hold close on the bridge with their Earth Shatter. They're also going to have a sound barrier to over-sustain themselves, but look at the old economy that the Dogmen are building. About to have another Nano Boost here in a minute. Kevin's self-destruct can claim so much space, and Chrono Dota's been charging this Earth Shatter so quickly, but look at Gator's finally knocking down four. 
seeing if they can try and exploit them now with that knockdown and doing so swiftly in that back position. A beautiful landing of the ultimate, claiming an entire team kill here, and that is what they need. They need this momentum to keep pressure onto Dogmen. Yeah, and with 40% accrued over here to the control point, Four dog or four goats rather, they're gonna be having more ultimates to play around with. Didn't need to use the sound barrier. Sit's not gonna have a graviton search. So wherever the enemy team of the dogmen are coming, Kevin needs to be heftily on that defense mage to try to shut down this grab by himself. Bionic grenade landing on the front, needing to be careful. Sleep dart though onto Gator with the Earth Shatter to follow up, trying to lock them down. A graviton as well with a beautiful sound barrier coming out by Swimmer on the defensive are on the attacking side to try and take it back. Seeing if they can force them away, managing to do so. Goats still in a great position. They've been able to maneuver them around this outer side, separating Majesty and will go down, unfortunately, for another retake. They're gonna have to fall back. They have to have a solid six for this. Which animal bites harder, especially when the defending team of the point has the same ultimates that were able to be pulled out from Dogman as they were walking in. That sound barrier from Tensa was so clutch to keep everybody alive in the heat of the moment. Gives Gator his own sustainability, another Earth Shatter to be played around, and the Nano Boost is probably going to be going over to him as well. Viz is just waiting, going to go and call out that rally. More armor onto the side of the Goats just to hold strong. Last team fight scenario. Sabbing the nano boost now on the front line, trying to see if Gator can get a follow up with the charge. Not able to do it, getting stunned immediately in the back. Oh no, Chrono is going to go down by Sit on that Zarya with Gator following up. So much congestion here in this back line, shutting him down and preventing them from getting there. But the overtime manages to continue. 99 to 86. They have to get on this point to try and force it. Seeing if they can get there, having at least again this one member trying to contest. You do have Kevin harassing. They're seeing if they can buy that time. Flying in and out with those rocket boosters along with Chrono going on to the wrecking ball. He's there but he can't do it now the graviton's gonna lock them down can they turn it back around in these last few moments of the overtime but are starting to be pressed back kevin the bionic grenade landing seeing if they can turn it not gonna happen so many members here four goats just continuing to hold them back earth shatter as an insurance policy with now only swimmer on the high ground trying to use that lucio going very gently just around that outer wall to make sure that they can keep this into overtime to hopefully buy some time overtime ticking away as they still continue to manage to hold it oh Once my again, god with the doofus getting back on and finally claiming round two. This is the matchup we want to see right now. The stalls of stalls, Rich. Swimmer was hanging out in the upper epsilon of the point just for so long. Gave Chronodata the open opportunity to come back a second time as Wrecking Ball. Such a good stall hero. Wrecking Ball is there just latching onto the center of the point. So hard to deal with. And Kevin diving in. Ice ended up swapping over to the Tracer. Just so many good stall heroes. Just when you think it was convincingly won by Goats. One Earth Shatter is going to go ahead and just sell that out. And now we're moving over to the final stage of Night Market of Lijiang. And this is the best that I personally saw Goats coming off of their previous series that we called Rich that they've seen, that they've looked all night long. They're going to not, don't fix what ain't broke here, ladies and gentlemen at home. It is literally the same exact compositions that we've seen since the start of this game across the board. It's all about the biotic grenades coming through from Ecor and Majesty. Dogman now trying to engage this very quickly on that front line, getting the advantage in positioning, now starting to tuck their way back. They want to have the position ready for this control point to become active, as now you're going to see Gator be aggressive. Bionic Grenade landing first, but the Sleep Dart onto the front line, shutting down Arai, almost getting the kill, not going to be able to. Some great healing in the back as they still continue to push. Now going around the corner, another Sleep Dart once again with the follow-up on the Bionic Grenade onto Sit. They need to get that follow-up and manage to do so. Numbers advantage going into Dogman as they do have a six versus four. Still trying to tuck away in the back, getting some aggressive push, but Chrono getting the pick onto the support. Now going to have the rally as they turn it back, and Goats is going to have to now, again, try and reevaluate this. And it's very important just to try to get back as soon as possible. Ecor's just dying there ever so quickly from the speed boost. Swimmer going to go and give him a bit of tinnitus on his way out as well. Just a full regroup is going to have to come through from Goats to reattack. This is, this is probably one of the harder points just to reestablish as an attacking team. The defense are setting up so strong. They already have a series of ultimates they can play around in the armor from Ice that came to crew so early is going to be able to help them out to set up for this grab on the wall. That's beautifully tucked in the corner, pulling the entire team together with a wonderful art shatter coming out by Chrono on the front. He wants it with now the sound barrier coming out to try and buffer this engage. Now it's going to be on the return though. You see the Graviton and Tensa using that beautiful sound barrier in return, countering them completely, pushing them back at 40%. And they look to now retake this point to start generating some percent of their own. 
Yeah, and they're gonna go ahead and flip this over. A good fight victory for Goats. And now they need to set up comfortably out in this courtyard area. Gator's gonna have an Earth Shatter. He needs to continue to be very adamant with his placement and his own position to keep his supports alive and to make the plays happen for the rest of his team. On the other hand, though, for Dogmen, they're gonna have a series of ultimates to walk in themselves, just waiting for Saucy to get this Graviton Surge, and it should be a team fight victory for them momentarily. Throwing down the Earth Shatter, Gator finds nothing. Going to try and find a follow-up. The Bionic Grenade beautifully landed once again here on the team of Dogman, continuing to push forward now, trying to get the advantage. Seeing if they can follow up here. Gator a little bit out in the front, needing to be careful. Doesn't want to get exploited. Self-destruct tucked to the right side on the defensive position. Gaining two, getting both Gator and Biz, as now they're going to look to follow up with the D-Mech onto Arai, continuing to lock them down, tucking it to that inner left side, not seeing it, and Goats are going to lose this point. Just so hard to deal with as the defending team once the uh once dogman just walked in to goats and they throw them both their tank ultimates as well and kevin laying down the self destruct was even more space to be claimed ice gonna go over to this rally here and give so much armor for the dogman now you can see for the side of goats are gonna have their own graviton surge kind of a reverse mirror that we just previously saw but from the dogmen how are goats going to go ahead and attack this keeping their supports alive sit just holding promptly looking for the biggest grab of his career that bionic grenade landing in the back on the supports again needing to be careful as they wait for it to fall off the engage happening here with sit on the front now getting the grab pulling two together the sleep dart to at least prevent a little bit of damage but isn't going to do too much nano boost now going to come out onto the reinhardt trying to flay that hammer at the support getting rid of majesty the beautiful focus here nar starting to push them back a great knockoff here coming off by sid along with the brigitte knockoff by biz turning it back around at 95 percent sent here really good biotic grenade coming from uh Igor there at the end as well just to go ahead and convincingly end iced on the brigetta need to be shut down on that inspire that brigetta brings to the fight herself but as they're walking back in they're gonna have both tank ultimates chrono dota has been very adamant about that earth shatter this entire series saucy's been landing big graviton surges but gator has been coming up short just like that earth shatter but the Bionic Grenade lands in the back. They're going to see if they can force them. But the, now the Earth Shatter coming out with the Graviton. Ultimates on both sides. Supercharged, or the Sound Barrier coming out on the defensive aggression. Dogman trying to push now with a Nano Boost here onto Chrono. Having the advantage still. They need to get there. 73% and climbing here for Goats. They want to try and reposition and force them back. Sleep Dart though in the back. Going to knock down Ice. Not going to be able to be in this fight as they try and persevere through this doorway. Starting to get some additional damage in the back. Having that aggression now by Biz. Now having the Bionic Grenade land needing to be careful they don't want to get overwhelmed here they're having to fall back and that's a good call to try and reposition seeing if they can potentially get a stagger here onto gator and manage to do so now having that separation once again it is going to be a ride all alone gets the kill on the chrono but the now graviton going to come out trying to pull them together to shut down that mini diva before she can find an opportunity to remax graviton in return now goats looking to pull them together seeing if they can follow up onto it but so much damage coming out by the nano boosted saucy from the team of dogman trying to push them away overtime going 99 to 97. They need to try and turn this. The last opportunity here on this map of Li Zhang Tower as they continue to use that Lucio to jump in and out of the window. Finally managing to turn it back around. This is where you need to see Goats try and get back in swiftly. Brig is going to come in quickly along with Arai on the back line. Lucio still staying there with the Earth Shatter to shut it down. They need to get these early staggers. There's only a few members left. Now we're going to see the Wrecking Ball. Graviton coming in with the self-destruct. Manages to clan Tensa as it will be the support going down. Overtime still ticking away. Sound Barrier as well well gonna keep them alive on dogman just battling it out right now as overtime will finally end with dogman claiming victory on Li Zhang tower that map was actually ridiculous all three stages Li Zhang tower brings out the best in most teams as control is meant to be in the first map you can see gator with the play of the game his earth shatters lackluster but his positioning this time around is comparative to the last one absolutely manic but that five man earth shatter was absolutely this uh the turning point for goats on gardens is absolutely insanity they were playing like a well-oiled machine even though they are a man down very impressive stuff coming through so far from the goats uh though they did lose and dogmen took it uh almost convincingly there in a few team fights it seems that they are really doing well in the fact that they are displacing the tanks into thinking that their entire team is behind while they are continuously forcing more space to be created by biotic grenades majesty is just playing like an absolute lunatic right now finding the most proper positioning just to land biotic grenades over and around the shielding of gator they really need to do something about that goats need to be more careful
I agree with you. And you saw it. You saw when they started to hyper focus onto that play by Majesty. They were able to get the changeover on the control point. You saw the aggression coming out by Gator, getting that pick, finally allowing them to lose that opportunity with the Bionic Grenade and just overall great healing that we're seeing from the Ana play itself. Again, you know, even just also to commend Iced on the Brigitte, continuing to hold, working in synergy with the other supports. It has been going very well for Dogman. Goats having a lot more aggression, though. It's allowing them to be a little bit more uh, optimistic on taking out that on a play but they still have to refine it and get it out of the way sooner or they're gonna still struggle absolutely and that's uh that's definitely well scouted there rich uh, you can tell majesty coming from goats himself probably has a little bit of those plays left inside his book if not inside his mind i mean these these players of goats they almost play like a like a computer playing a chess match almost. Once you play it a few <laughs> times, you're going to understand how it's going to be attacking a certain situation. And I can see that the, uh, I, I guess the resilience of Chrono Dota, all the experience that he has had playing from the multitude of teams through contenders and all the different regions are really coming to show there because Gator is getting a run for his money, looking for these Earth Shatters, only finding shields, except for that one five man. That play of the game was absolutely huge. I want to see more of that from Gator. I know that he can do it. And as we're moving into Rialto, it's going to be more eccentric around the dips and dives, the corners around the bridges and buildings for Ryan's to find Shatters. And again, trying to see if they can even use that environmental opportunity here. We're going to now see, again, as you said, even with Chrono Dota, I mean, there's been so much riding on his shoulders. He's gone through the thick of things as a player and with his team as a whole, trying to really be able to be on the same level. And if they could take out this team of goats, I think that would shine so much light onto them as a team. But, you know, goats not wanting to give this up yet. Again, they've been showing a lot more opportunity for a, a win here. And moving into this map, they may have an opportunity with them looking to, again, have that Sombra play to hopefully use it more effectively than we saw prior in the match against Phase 2. Yeah, and against Phase 2 was definitely a good training ground to see how they are going to be against the enemy team here of the dogmen and it's going to be set themselves up to lay down a more juicy steak on the grill they don't want to be ending their open division run here and as they're picking the map goats did of rialto they're going to be setting up their attack firsthand one thing to definitely keep note on here rich is that we saw a lot of saucy's zarya there because there was a lot of three three mm -hmm. play now we get to see this doomfist a more prevalent hero in the current patch of overwatch is going to come and take a rocking into gator and just make him more or make him less comfortable right but he's gonna gator on the other hand four goats are gonna be coming out on a core dive sit on the sombra needs to be getting into the back line against majesty and shutting down the biotic grenade before it's even on cooldown Gator now getting very aggressive here on that high ground, trying to arc start the aggression. Now going to have some retaliation, though, seeing if they can have Goats get up there, quickly get some picks, potentially find the opportunity, as Iced is now going to look to try and harass in the back line. Nobody really forcing that translocate just yet. Getting a nice pick, though, in the back onto Saucy, getting overextended, immediately picked off the response from Goats very fast here to make sure that they can get rid of that play as they're now going to move into this open space. They have a lot of opportunity now to try and stagger. Dogman having to retreat, breaking off once again. You do see Chrono getting a little bit separated, having to fall back and try and regroup here as this payload's going to continue moving with that still subtle iced Sombra play in the back. It's going to it's just be very difficult. And you see Dogman just, try, or, yeah, Dogman just trying to find an opening into the point. Biotic Grenade's going to be able to finding the space there. And it's Chrono Dota just diving in with the Nano Boost, finding this Primal Rage very early, but he doesn't even need it. And they're going to look to try and clean it up. Now, they got that early pick here by Kevin and Swimmer, taking out Gator and Biz, and they weren't able to stay in this. Sit getting very low as well on the, the Sombra, needing to fall back. They want to regroup here. And they do have a decent amount of ultimates here, though. 3-2 to two right now, hoping to be 3-3, three, three, as they're going to look for some fireworks soon. And Majesty's play, though, is absolutely filthy. No matter how many ultimates it seems that Goats want to throw at them, uh, it seems Majesty is just on the other hand there. Way out of the EMP range, but the EMP is fat from Sid. And they at least gain a couple. It will be Chrono being taken down here by Arai. Self-destruct, though, trying to see if they can get a return. Even exchange now. Both Winstons out of this fight as they continue to try and push with a few meters left to go towards this next checkpoint. Still trying to scuffle. They do get a self-destruct along with Swimmer using that sound barrier in the back, continuing to make sure that they can withstand the incoming damage. Halting it now on the payload. Another beautiful bionic grenade as they are going to have to force out that sound barrier from the side of Goats. 
Tensa trying to keep them alive here as the damage is coming in. Once that is off cooldown, it will be now another aggressive push with the Primal Rage in the back by Chrono. Trying to thrash them away from this point. Still looking for a pick, having a difficult time getting rid of these few members since the healers are doing so much right now. Consistent pressure in the back. Gator getting so low, needing to try and exploit these positionings right now on the defense. It will be God. Oh my goodness, Dogman getting a fall back right now because of that EMP generated once again by Sit allowing them to get so close to this next checkpoint with 1.6 meters still to go. Still maintaining the healing, finally reaching the point and going to look to regroup now. Ikor throwing Ooh. the nano boost on to Sit. Not only is a lot of resilience to damage that the Sombra can take at that point from Goats, but a lot of damage output as well. Getting that EMP was absolutely huge. Stuffing the enemy team of Dogman, trying to get another contest in there. It's going to be Goats unlocking the second stage of Rialto, and they're going to have Arise uh, self-destruct here. Diva Bombs in particular for this map, Rich, have been absolutely wonderful to watch. There's so many corners that you can play around, and there's so many different angles you can take, but the EMP coming through from Ice in the back line shuts down too. And they're gonna collapse on it, getting a beautiful boot by Swimmer, taking out Gator, getting him immediately out of the fight, as they're gonna look to clean this up swiftly from that position overall. And from that position right then and there, winning the team fight convincingly off of one ultimate, that's what Sombra brings to this current patch. Why is she is so strong in this current meta is because Sombra and Sombra players within their own right can just shut down an entire team fight, even from one hack alone. But once you're out of position, you're out of position, and it just leaves you almost enabled and ready for a multitude of different scenarios. You gotta be careful going into the back line, but Biz, on the other hand, pulling out the rally, just holding down the W key, finds the pilot diva and Kevin as he's trying to get out the self-destruct. Beautiful Bionic Grenade landing as well onto Goats, trying to slow their momentum, but they've already done too much damage. Saucy and Chrono getting picked off. They're looking to turn this corner now and try and find the opportunity to continue this pressure. And honestly, they're doing very well, at least being able to salvage as many numbers out of these fights and not overcommitting on Dogman. And Dogmen just need to be methodical when they walk back in here. I mean, they're going to have Chrono Dota's uh, Primal Rage so they can sustain themselves on the point for sure. And the Nano Boost coming out from Majesty is going to be looking strong, but this nice EMP self-destruct combo coming out. Though they find Saucy, that's a lot of healing out of the way. And the sound barrier is coming in too late, but we'll get a little bit of maximization here coming out by the EMP well on the return side. Seeing if they can lock them down. Goats getting that nano boost now off on to Gator with the back. Still having that Primal Rage available. Seeing if they can pick them off one by one. Bionic Grenade landing again, but so much damage again is coming out. They've been able to reposition themselves and capitalize on this push by Dogman, shutting them down even with the ultimate advantage that they had there. Yeah, and that's one of the more scarier parts about Rialto. Shortest escort map in the land of Overwatch as well that it can set up a snowball slightly easier. You need to get, as a defending team, you need to get it back on the payload as soon as possible to try to stop the momentum that the attacking team can gain. And that's just what you're seeing right here and right now. Biz with another rally, just sustaining the front line just to push on forward. Sits about to have another EMP. And Gators trying to hop into the back line, forcing out that primal rage, but a beautiful bionic grenade. They want to take out Majesty. They need to get that kill onto the support who is consistently keeping them alive with now a supercharged or su uh, self-destruct overhead looking to claim, but going to be too high. Nobody going to get picked off now. Two minutes and 35 seconds still to go. Momentum still in their favor, but a self-destruct by Kevin coming out again too high. Not going to claim any kills. EMP in return by Sid, looking to see if they can move into the back line, try and contest against it. Chrono with the Earth Shatter, starting to lock them down, does get a double as they move forward. Finally isolate the, isolating them away from this with a late stagger now going to go on Arai. Oh man, some good tactical crouching coming over here. Arai on the Pilot Diva, <laughs> procking over that passive. And those of you at home that don't know what Pilot Diva's passive is, once you're out of the mech, you actually proc her passive, which is being absolutely staggered until the next team fight. But take a look at the Dogmen. They have swapped back over fully to what has been working out for them through the map of Li Zhang Tower. Saucy getting so much damage, so much charge, gonna have this Graviton Surge upon the entry of the attacking team. Sit is now on his own. Zarya, you gotta go tit for tat when you see 3-3 three, three on your enemies. You might as well do it yourself. Seeing if they can try and get a good turnaround here. It will be Gator with the Nano Boost on the front, but going to be locked down with the Graviton. Beautiful Bionic Grenade as well! And that's what we were talking about. Again, unable to do anything about it. Sound Barrier to secure that defensive hold as they are going to force Goats back again. And again, Majesty getting a beautiful Bionic Grenade to lock that down.
Yeah, the biotic grenades again. The name of the one ability to shut down and to create plays for your team and against the others. Kevin is going to get that final kill and it's good stagger on the gator because now goats need to wait a solid 10 seconds before they can even think about moving down this small archway onto the point. This might as well be a last team fight scenario considering when you have a Brigetta and three supports on either of these teams, the team fights are lasting for such a long time. So expect rallies across the board, but Chrono Dota is going to be hanging out. He's going to be waiting for the entryway. He wants another big earth shatter. Self destruct coming overhead, trying to get that early pick. Does manage to get one. It takes out Sit. Kevin able to make the numbers in there. But now Dogman having a 6v5. They're going to have to be careful now as they're going to look to advance on this Bionic Grenade landing into the back, forcing them away. Chrono leading the way with Kevin as long as Saucy as well. So many tanks looking to lead this charge against this team, trying to force them back. But they can't be overzealous here. They don't want to overextend and find themselves getting the short end of the stick here. Starting to retreat back. Four ultimates in favor of Goats. Now as they're going to try and use these as the rallies coming out. Biz now gonna engage with it. Here comes the Graviton in return though. From behind, Saucy overhead, trying to lock them down with a Bionic Grenade, looking to shut this down with a self-destruct now coming overhead. Arai looking to take out Saucy, does manage to do so. Gator getting a double onto the supports. Sit following up, they're looking to clean this up as now they're gonna start moving the payload forward. The previous team fights of this one, convincing one by the GOATs, the economic push that absolutely fell, uh, found out the Earth Shatter and the Self Destruct. Chrono Dota and Kevin couldn't sustain through the Graviton Surge of Saucy. They're gonna get a few more inches here on the payload. Sit is gonna be hanging out on the side. He's gonna be looking for a big Graviton Surge so that way Goats can complete the map. Starting to try and stay grouped. They don't want to get separated, but gonna get pulled in. At least getting one. Now getting a second, trying to lock them down on this uh, defensive side. Seeing if they can push it. Saucy getting the pick though onto the support. Huge with an Earth Shatter as well. Landing two. It will be iced along with Swimmer. Both supports. So much damage in the back as now it's only going to be these three members remaining here on the side of Dogman. Still trying to survive through it. It will be now the Wrecking Ball coming out onto Kevin. Seeing if they can get a nice support here with that sound barrier. Buying some time. Earth Shatter in return now. Going to try and knock down the support. Tracer coming out as well though on Ghost. Seeing if they can get back into this by Biz. Now we're going to have the self-destruct overhead. Claiming two! Both Kevin and Swimmer. They're not out of it yet. They want to push the rest of the way. Two meters to go and that's going to be it. They do finish the round in the last few moments this map. Arai with the biggest heroic play of his life by way of good bubbles and tank play all together. This seems like a nice reformed goats of which we saw earlier today, Rich. They are holding their own and even though they didn't have any time in the bank, capturing all three points will, will guarantee them another attack phase if Dogmen do the same. I gotta give props out to Biz who's making a substitution into this team. He's absolutely making a standing on this Brigetta, coming back on the Tracer just to try to get out as much damage as humanly possible. The stagger and the stall coming from Goats in that final moment was absolutely immense, but not to uh, not to knock off Dogmen, of course. Kevin coming back out on, on the Wrecking Ball almost made a good outing, but just couldn't deal with it. Once you have so many big, strong members, big tanks on the point for the attacking team, no Wrecking Ball is going to be staying in there for long by crowd-controlling effects all included. So now when... Goats are coming out on their defense. Again, they are working this well-oiled machine. All of you know and love at home. Don't fix what ain't broke. The one thing we always wanted to see and we talked about on the analyst desk as well was do they have more on a play coming out from them? And it's Ecor who has been making a very strong showcasing landing. Good. Not only biotic grenades for his team to gain a, a boost of healing, but also purpling the enemy team as well. Majesty is getting a run for his money on this map in particular. And you really are going to have to give a lot of credit to them. I mean, Majesty, again, doing such a great job on it. But we're seeing Goats respond effectively here. And as you said, too, with Biz going onto that Tracer at the tail end of it, it's allowing them to really respond when needed. And with that substitution, we were concerned going into it that that was going to hurt Goats. But it's actually still doing very well. They're responding effectively. They're still having communication with this alternative player that's coming in. And it's really showing on their overall team composition. Absolutely. And take a look. Look at this defense here they're not even scared to show their position they definitely see gator shield walking out the gate they are trying to hold so close trying to work their way so that way they can get another definitive defense upon entry if they all wipe but the goal here is to try to get as many resources out as possible maybe gator gets a quick ultimate and an earth shatter and they can win the team fight convincingly and already stall them out in their spawn Kevin being slept for the entire duration there, locking them down out of that fight. Bionic Grenade gonna follow up, and Goats are still managing to hold strong, but there comes the return. It will be Swimmer getting a double kill boop off the edge for the environment, and that's gonna shut down this aggressive push by Goats. Goodness. 
That's aggressive for sure, but you can take a look at the ult charge as well, Rich. The ult economy has been heavily built besides on the side for Majesty. Ecor's about to have a nano boost slightly under. Ecor is about to have this for the re-entry. It's going to help Gator find this urge shatter very quickly. And look at the payload is just rounding about the second corner for Rialto. Good defense so far from the GOATs. They just need to be careful not to walk into too many ultimates, but the Biotic Grenade from Ecor is going to help them find more. And the Earth Shatter followed up by the Bionic Grenade, completely looking to lock them down. Arai so very low in the back, generating a lot of healing though from... Trying to keep them alive. They got that early pick. Now getting a second. Wanting to follow up here as they keep this momentum as they have the shielding by the rally coming out by Ice with still three ultimates maintained. They did not commit more than they needed to here and that was great communication on the side of Dogman. Dogman only using the rally and only some so that way they can continue on the claim for space. But the Graviton Surge coming from Saucy on the bridge is going to help them that much further. Nobody can get to the point to stop the payload from capturing on point A. Chrono Dota is absolutely right running rampant here about to have another earth shatter for the next team fight indefinitely it's gonna have to watch out to block gators he's been doing a good job thus far the only thing that i can say that much further and i'm gonna sound like a broken record for you at home these biotic grenades coming from majesty are absolutely insane i mean the antis that he's be able to being able to find on key targets is just helping the tank line of saucy kevin and chrono dota continuously finding all of the damage in the known universe Graviton coming out with Chrono getting the nano boost. Going to be preventing that Earth Shatter coming in by. It's beautiful job again with the shielding popping up just in time as they're now going to look to turn this self-destruct on the return. Goats trying to get the pick here. Not going to be able to do it. They're still managing to keep this payload stalled right now as Goats wants to get a pick here. Managed to get one and now a second. They're starting to force them away and now needing to be careful again. That Bionic Grenade landing just preventing that healing. They're still going to be aggressive but know that they cannot push that much further and they really don't need to right now. They want to start falling back they've got the two support ultimates and are going to look to try and generate another here and they want to continue to claim this space as well i mean it, though they may not know off the top of their head but chrono dota is definitely walking in here with an earth shatter and they don't want to give him all the space to work his way around the shield of gator and find a big earth shatter but he's going to get nano boosted gator is just walking forward and it's a three-man earth shatter and the sound barrier trying to survive oh, no. through it, but you see it in return coming out by Goats, looking to lock them down completely, not allowing them to have any room at all. And as you said, managing that space effectively is key, and Goats is following through on it. Yeah, Goats are doing a good job of following through off of two support ultimates there, the Nano Boost. Or it was actually three. They had the Nano Boost on the Gator, plus the Earth Shatter as well from himself. Tensa ending up using the Sound Barriers to save themselves for the attacker's advantage there. The spawn is so close. I'm gonna drop down a Graviton Surge. Sit. And where's the follow-up, though? It's unable to come through just now. It does. And they look to turn it around with that Earth Shatter knocking down three. The bon Bionic Grenade giving some great support here by Majesty as now they're gonna look to try and get the self-destruct. Forcing them back. Chrono now losing that Nano Boost. Not gonna gain too much more out seeing if they can force them away from the payload and generate some momentum. But again, you see Goats having Icker on that high ground with the Ana staying out of position, out of the firing range, and continuing to keep this team of Goats alive and moving. Kevin's head is on the swivel, too. He needs to know where the Ana is at all times. He's been trying to shut down as many sleeves and biotic grenades as possible, but he can't shut down Saucy's Graviton Surge. We'll find the anti on a Tensa and the Flame Strike to claim. And that's going to be the Graviton, not, or that's going to be the... Nano boost coming out in the back with self destruct now overhead, trying to see if they can turn it around again. It's just this consistent momentum. An Earth Shatter oh, claiming three. three now with them continuing to push back on this team of goats. Nobody gonna survive through it, and it is just a solid, consistent momentum of ultimate after ultimate. They are just not wanting to give any ground here, and but they're just unfortunately being taken advantage of with this rotation of ultimates. Yeah, Dogmen are really showing their understanding of how to cycle through all these tank ultimates. Once uh, the Graviton Surge was used, just a moments later, the Earth Shatter was built by Chrono Dota. He's already halfway to another one. He's about to be right there with Saucy, who's at so much charge, just being able to build up another one. Majesty is about to have another Nano Boost. Just look at how many ultimates this team of Dogmen are able to build themselves. But it's going to be a Nano Boost immediately onto Saucy just to help him get an even faster one. But the defensive Graviton Surge comes through. And it will be a double kill coming out by Arai on the high ground with the self-destruct claiming two supports as you're going to now have to be careful. Dogman has to fall back. Gator getting another pick here and they're looking to reset with two minutes and 45 seconds. Still a decent amount of time here for them to get back and get into this fight, but they don't want to have any more pitfalls like this as they're now going to have to engage this coming out of the spawn. Go showing us what they came to play is a very aggressive hold so far. The Graviton Surge came through, but it's only going to find Arai and Sit on the inside of it. Those aren't the targets that you were looking for. But a big charge from Gator towards the payload again will claim Saucy's life. And now they can continue to hold 
in the courtyard of their spawn with a smile on their face. They're going to be able to play through Chrono Dota's Earth Shatter here momentarily. The rally from Ice should be coming through as well, so they can try to bulldoze their way through the enemy team of Goats that are just holding so close because Goats, they have no tank ultimates. So I'm, I'm interested to see what their play is in this courtyard. Now they're going to have the Nano Boost on Cater, but beautiful Bionic Grenade once again coming from both sides, actually. It will be Chrono getting a double with the Fire Strike, seeing if they can turn it around. Earth Shatter in the back with a Cell Destruct as well, landing just next to the Payload. Manages to claim Sit on that Zarya, but they still, again, are back and forth right now. It will be the last few members, both Iker along with Arai on the point, but they are looking to finally start to pick them away slowly as they're hopefully going to get back here soon to stop this momentum. Dogmen had to use so many of their resources inside their ult economy just to claim on the point itself. So if you're goats, you got to be feeling pretty good about that. Though the Graviton Surge won't be there momentarily. They're going to be able to walk out of spawn with a certain amount of armor and support ultimates as well. Tensa has been showing us how to use that sound barrier mid-fight and has been really showcasing how he can push the team into the next level. But Gator has been charging here and he's been really making a strong showcasing on how to claim space so that way Sick can find all of the ultimate charge for his grab. Is trying to give some coverage here with that shielding from the rally, looking to force them back. But another Earth Shatter claiming three, seeing if they can follow up now with a sound barrier. But self destruct overhead isn't going to be able to claim anything. Still trying to keep it going. Two ultimates in favor of Goats as they're now going to unleash the Earth Shatter, landing it onto Saucy, trying to follow it up here, seeing if they can force them away from this and trying to get the picks that they need. They're still maintaining some sustain here though with the healing. 45 seconds to go. And at this point, they're being overwhelmed. There's such aggression coming in the back by Gator getting a follow up but isn't going to be able to do too much more. It will be Chrono going down, Biz getting the follow-up and looking to force them back once again. And with 30 seconds left, all of these staggers towards the end is going to be even more devastating because in a sense, you're going to see Dog Benikita. They need to find a way to make it back to the point. A good sleep dart on Negator, however, is going to help them momentarily, but he's about to have another Earth Shatter just previously using it in the last team fight. It sits Graviton Surge that is going to do or die in fact, both the Zarya's for both these teams, do or die situation, can Dogman get capture on this point or even get themselves on? And will Sid be able to sustain themselves through this grab? And the grab's gonna be used, a bionic grenade landing as well. No, very low in the back, finally going down, self-destruct coming out, trying to isolate them away. It will be now Goats continuing to hold strong here on this point. Overtime taking away. Can they manage to get back in time with nobody yet being able to harass against it, trying to get out of that respawn quick enough, but they're going to be so aggressive to hold them back and not allow them to get near that payload once again. And we have a 1-1 series here, Rich, and you can see Goats, they don't want to let go quite yet. Normally, you would make the joke that the dog doesn't let go of its teeth or let go of its toy, but you can see now Gator, back-to-back -back play of the game since Reinhardt has been a spectacle to watch. It seems that he keeps getting stronger the more that he plays throughout the day in this last match, especially that big man Earth Shatter just to claim the point on defense. And this is really where Goats started making a strong showcasing on their defense for the third point. Because if you remember correctly, that's right where the capture happened for Dogmen, and then they actually unlocked point C. But the goats, they never even gave them the light of day. They barely even saw into the final capture point of point C of Rialto. So goats really sitting strong and really showing us what good tank play is all about. You are very right. And again, getting that quad kill, finding the window and completely executing on it. They have been doing such a great job on their front line. And again, with the fact that they've been now having Iker kind of step it up here, having the assistance of bids coming out on the supports, I think it's honestly allowing their front tank line to flourish that much more effectively here against this oncoming team of Dogmen. Yeah, Dogmen need go back to the drawing board. I made this point earlier on why I love 2CP Assault, as you may know it or may hate it. One of the best parts is showing what you can learn from the enemy team. And what I've been seeing so far walking into this map is that Gator has been understanding where Chrono Dota has been playing and where Majesty's sightlines are coming from and just being able to shut it down with their sheer aggression. We saw earlier today that Phase 2 was able to shut it down with a smile on their face, but Dogmen, when the aggression and the accelerator comes through from Goats, they almost have a harder time on dealing with it, especially when they're trying to aggress their way onto an objective. 50 seconds now again to, until we have this match begin and I like you said with the 2 CP I am interesting to see interested to see how these two teams are going to fend off we've seen such solid defenses from both teams again we did see the victory coming out on to Rialto for goats but they've been playing so well defensively on both sides that this last capture point is going to be extremely interesting to see how they play it out and who is going to be able to find those crucial picks in their momentum and rotation around that point to actually claim victory here. Yeah, then you can see there again, 
ever since map one, it seems that the goats, they don't want to fix this well-oiled machine that has been eco on this, uh, on this, on the Ana with Zenith on the Brigitta, Intensa on the tried and true Lucio. They have been playing so well. And as they look to attack this point of point A, this is where this exact composition was made infamous by this exact team. But it's going to be a dive defense setting up for the Dogman by Saucy on the Wrecking Ball. Triple tank dive in the defense. If Ice can find a good target to hack it, it's going to get obliterated. And they're already starting to engage quickly in the back line, trying to get a flanking position. Gator now needing to be careful, looking for a charge to just at least maneuver back with the rest of the team. They're on that bridgeway, though. You do see Dogman being very well positioned here to try and contest against it, as now Goats are going to move on to the high ground. They want to try and find this opportunity to engage with the Wrecking Ball high overhead. Bionic Grenade landing, and they are completely pushing them back on this high ground, trying to survive through that damage. A great job, though, here on this aggressive push. Goats not getting taken advantage of. Hack going to come out as well trying to lock them down to see if they can prevent them from claiming this point they're getting close they're looking to claim the first tick as now you're going to see the reposition started to get onto the point iced in the back needing to be careful not wanting to get picked off with now saucy with the nano boost trying to get back onto the point but awry already claiming the dmic and the follow-up onto swimmer as they're looking to claim the second tick still maintaining this keeping it strong ice now dropping low seeing if they can contest it no translocate coming out right now and they are just going to have to fall back just having to fall back indeed. Ice on that Samba already is going to be closing to that EMP Saucy with a quick swap over to Doomfist, but the Snowball is already trying to be set. Gator's about to have an Urge Shatter. All three tank ultimates, in fact, up here for the side of Goats here momentarily, and they're already on the point. They're already trying to find their opening, but look at the Doomfist. Saucy already in the back line finds the main healer. And they're able to get them quickly getting Iker out of the fight. They've been evaluating what the play has been from Goats and now going to give them a taste of their own medicine, forcing them back, getting those supports out of the fight and stabilizing here with now six minutes still to defend. Yeah, and that was a really good play from Saucy, just finding the angle, shutting down Ecor, so that was the no healing and no biotic grenade to find inside Sits Graviton Surge that was thrown into that last fight. So now it just comes down to a stacking old opportunity for Goats. Do we find one opening with one ultimate, or do we just stack all six of them to try to snowball onto the point and tap into that bank when we need B? But they got to be careful when they're pushing through this left room over here. Ice wants to see them grouped up for a big EMP. It could come through, and, and it does. And it's going to be just around the corner, stealthily trying to find that position. Manages to do so, locking them away. Seeing the ult evaluation here on the team. Goats is they're going to now force that primal rage. Chrono getting in the back again, looking to solely focus on these supports, getting them out of the fight as now the sound barrier is going to come out, though. Goats trying to turn this back around. They want to stay in this fight. They don't want to get taken out by the use of that EMP. Now with the nano boost coming out on to Gator on the front, trying to harass onto Kevin. Seeing if they can keep it up with the Meteor Strike. Claiming Sith is going to go down, taking out the tank as this Doomfist by Saucy continues to try and deal so much damage with the Nano Boost in the back. Self-Destruct to look to claim it. Gator getting a double, one of them being the charge. Kevin all alone now on the point. They have to be careful, trying to see if they can buy as much time as possible to potentially get this respawn advantage. Now going to have the jump coming out by Chrono on the Winston, staying in this, staying in this fight still with Ice now repositioning in the back, trying to see if they can get some hack in the back line to try and prevent that protection on the front from the Reinhardt Gator as they do once again have the Earth Shatter. And there it is, unleashed onto two. It is going to be a pressure once again, trying to keep them off. They're getting so close to capturing it. But in the back line, you saw the stealth come in with the Winston once again. Chrono surprising them, getting into the back to keep it a moment longer. Five versus two now, still maintaining the numbers as goats as they want to get the EMP. Ooh. But it is going to come out by Ice, trying to see if they can find the opportunity to exploit it with the jump in coming in by Chrono. Swimmer not wanting to give up as well, giving a lot of healing here and mobility in the back they are just gonna grind this out as long as possible chrono now taking out icker here with that primal rage again trying to see if they can push it majesty now having that nano boost needing to find an opportunity to use it here as they're looking to start to stabilize the response finally coming in pressing them back and holding them for over a minute in that fight just when you think Dogman can't deal with Gator, they in fact get his main source of healing up out of the way one more time. Big EMP coming through from Ice, but it just wasn't enough. It was just heroic play and a good dive from Chrono Dota coming through to pick apart Igor out of that Primal Rage. But another series of ultimates stacking in here for Goats when they walk in. Another Earth Shatter, but when you lose your Diva like that so early, it's going to be hard to sustain a push coming through momentarily. Ice, however, going back to the spawn room, swapping to the far this time around, looking for a big amount of splash damage on to the enemies of goats trying to shut them down and try to pull away any pressure off of any of the ground targets that dogmen are trying to offer them but without a mercy in the sky to sustain iced it's going to be very difficult for farah to stay up and about ecor needs to come up huge on one shot while awry shuts it down altogether 
Now starting with the rally, seeing if they can maintain that front. Biz getting a great opportunity to give a lot of armor as the Earth Chatter is going to come out on the defensive side. It will be the usage trying to maintain it here. Gator not finding too much value out of it, but using that nano boost to see if he can follow up. Meteor Strike by Saucy in the back. A self-destruct will be tucked away in the corner, trying to see if they can claim a kill. Isn't going to be able to do so, as now Goats are looking to again try to reform here on this point, seeing if they can force them away. Still, I believe in favor of Dogman, as they do have the respawn advantage. The numbers are still even. Graviton going to come out now. Goat seeing if they can lock them down. Kevin going to get demeked and finally going down along with a beautiful Bionic Grenade in the back onto Goats. That's going to be a lot of awareness. They're going to need to not get picked off as Chrono with the Primal Rage takes out Gator and looks to continue. But Sick manages to get the pick. They're still going to keep on this. Two minutes and 30 seconds still to go as it's going to go back and forth with these respawns. Hopefully going to finally press back Goats as they look to now regroup. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and Sit was definitely doing a fantastic job. The only unfortunate factoid was that Gator died early in that fight to the Primal Rage, the Corona Dota. They couldn't shut down the Winston too uh, early enough. That way Gator can find another Earth Shatter. These Earth Shatters for Gator seem to be a do or die situation for if Goats are able to capture a point or not. They still have 80% to the capture point, so one more team fight in a convincing fashion will give them the victory. Ecor now over to the Moira. So this is their tried and true format. This is Goats playing Goats, y'all. And they are going to look to, again, that one backline position on the right side for the defense. Having Iced using the Rocket Barrage, though. The Nano Boost trying to claim some picks with it. Not going to be able to do so. Meteor Strike now in the back. Again, not gaining anything out of it. Ultimate's being committed. Not gaining value out of it as they're going to still have the numbers advantage. Trying to push them away. Having four versus four now on the point. Continuing to contest back as it will be. Goats now starting to persevere through it. Sound Barrier coming out by Swimmer on the high ground. Once again, maintaining this team to try and survive through it. Graviton in the corner, though. Can they expect it, bringing them together, getting the DVAC, and now to force them away. One minute and 15 seconds as they do have the numbers advantage. They need to get this Tracer play out of this point. Ice doing a beautiful job continuing to maintain this. Dashing around, keeping it going. One member still to go. Rally now not going to be available just yet. They do use the Coalescence, though. Iker going to have it for this engage as they will take out Soxy and Chrono. Picking them off with now the pile drive by Kevin. Continuing to keep them alive as again Swimmer manages to buy a lot of time here with that Lucio Wall ride. Self-destruct high overhead in the back, trying to see if they can turn it. Still continuing to contest on it with just a sliver left to go. And they finally get it! Goats finally able to complete this round. And they're able to, sh to do it so with time as well. That's one of the biggest uh, points here for any assault map is when you do have time, almost a guaranteed second attack phase. Sure, Dogmen uh, be looking and wanting to capture both points themselves. It's going to be Goats with the time bank being able to set themselves up for a second attack if need be. The biggest play for me in that previous fight there, Rich, was when they shut down Chrono Dota coming in. Big body blocks coming through from Arai. Uh, Gator was asleep, however, from the re-entry coming in from Majesty. But shutting down Chrono Dota, he was about 5% away from getting that Primal Rage. was about to be a devastating ultimate for Goats to deal with. Once more, it came through about three solid times just when you thought that Goats had won the team fight and had captured the point. They just couldn't deal with Chrono. Chrono really showing how much he has to offer this team of dogmen. And when it works well with Saucy on this Doomfist and Ice on a multitude of target or a multitude of heroes, rather, whether it be the Somber, Tracer, or even the Pharah that we saw there momentarily, is there's so much space to be picked up on. And there's so much damage coming out from those players in particular that Goats are just having a hard time on keeping their supports alive while holding up their aggression. Strongly agree with that. And again, Chrono having such synergy with his team. He is definitely demonstrating his play here. But again, just kudos to the rest of them being able to evaluate that play style and work to increase their overall gameplay experience going through this and being able to dominate here when they can against this Ghost, which is, again, still being played very well. They're just, unfortunately, you know, having some troubles here and there on a little things, but, you know, they're still managing to come together as their composition. The switch, that was extremely crucial at the very tail end of it. They responded to it effectively, allowed them to at least get it with something in their time bank. Few Roadblocks climbing up the mountain, goats do have in their way, but they're not going down without a fight here. I mean, you can see that dogmen are really working well together. They really understand how these compositions work out. And speaking of those compositions, they're going to pull out on these two strong DPS in this current patch. Somber and Doomfist can be very ugly to deal with, especially when it's by way of the dive of Kevin and Chrono. And now that you can see the tank play coming out from a Rai Gator and Sit in between themselves, they need to stick together. They can't afford to go too aggressive. They need to set up Ecor for one big grenade and that's going to shut down the push but you can see the dogmen they saw what they were up against and they immediately go back to the spawn and swap back over to a 3-3 composition themselves 
And that's major credit to them as they're now going to look to try and move to that upper right hand side. They want to go toe to toe right now to try and contest against it. They are going to look for that high ground position. Bionic Grenade is going to land, but not going to gain as much out of it. Not as much as we saw on the returning side here as they're now dropping down to contest against it. Still having the positioning on the control point, looking to force them away, almost getting the first tick, but Chrono being completely pushed back away from that front line, which will give them some space now for Goats to try and press in the back. Icker doing a great job continuing to stay isolated as they do get some great healing with Gator finally getting a pick here onto the tank along with the follow-up onto the supports. Goats now collapsing immediately onto this point and completely shutting that pressure down. Ikor found a very, very good biotic grenade there in the site. He actually sought down Swimmer. He was only about 10 HP, and that was the one thing that they absolutely needed to keep up. The biggest peel for Majesty. Majesty got pushed down off the high ground immediately from a ride, didn't land the sleep dart, immediately it got eaten. And now the ult economy you can see for the defenders here are going to have all three tank ultimates in this next team fight. They're about to actually have a six pack of ultimates while Majesty just getting that nano boost is probably going to give it over to Chrono so that way they can get an earth shatter and try to find a convincing victory. Kevin's just working to get this mech back so that way they can start a push for Dogman. And they definitely need it. They cannot afford to go into this without it. As they now look to have again that triple ultimate. Here comes Graviton now by Sith, locking them again into that room. Some swift movement and they are cleaning house in that small corridor, shutting them down and only committing the one ultimate to that fight with an entire team kill. And then this is where dogmen do or die. This has to be an economic push coming in here for a multitude of reasons. They need and probably understand that there is five more ultimates from goats that they need to get through. So which ultimates do they want to get out first? Probably the nano boost as well as the sound barrier. But Ice with this rally is just trying to speed boost onto the point. But they shut down the earth shatter. That's a good start from Gator. Both Ryans gaining that nano boost, trying to go head to head. It will be an even exchange of charge action with the rally still maintaining though by Biz, giving them some great buffering to try and engage on this point. Seeing if they can force them back, having to retreat again, minute and 20 seconds to go. And they're now gonna have to force a retreat once again. They cannot manage to have another push like this. And they honestly still have on goats, now gonna have the Graviton up again with three ultimates. And they only used three in the previous fight as well. They just used the rally as far as they were exiting. And you can see all that health. That armor, in fact, right underneath the shielding for Zarya's sit is hanging around so much energy. In fact, 65 to a 70% charge. He's going to throw down this grab against the oh! wall. There's nothing you can do about it. And they're going to try and buffer it with the sound barrier, seeing if they can counteract it with another Graviton of their own, contesting it with the Earth Shatter being dropped by both sides again. So oh my! Three by Arai! The DMEC as well, locking them away. 40 seconds to go, but that's going to be a huge upset right now as they are going to be still at a disadvantage with Biz coming out with a ult with the ultimate of rally on the defense once again 30 seconds left here rich and this is a, a do or die situation that much further a last team fight scenario to capture point a for dogman they need to come up with something huge this rally coming up from ice here momentarily needs to be the rally of his career to set up the rest of their tanks needs to keep the healing alive and give it over to majesty so that way that nano boost can help out a tank get their ultimates that much quicker but the defenders are just hanging out so cleanly they're playing so methodically shutting down every push that dogmen have to offer goats playing like that well oiled machine i was talking about utilizing this middle ground as they do try to pressure across the bridge chrono now but having the nano boost trying to get the pin but isn't gonna claim it here comes Russian now they need to get on the point keeping it into overtime they will have biz though getting the nano boost on the brigitte getting a beautiful stun here able to take out chrono as Iker goes down as well seeing if they can maintain on this point still holding strong and earth shatter coming out though by goats looking to lock them down the supports are going to be taken as they want to get pick after pick self-destruct though now going to come overhead kevin wanting to land it shield they're available bionic grenade going to land swimmer unfortunately is going to have to dodge in and out of that space to try and keep it alive Chrono switching onto the Wrecking Ball. Beautiful switch now in the last instance, but it's not going to be enough. And that's going to be Goats taking Temple of Anubis. Goats with the pre two previous map victories there are going up in the series, and they're moving over to Hybrid with a smile on their face here, Rich. Just when you thought Goats were down and out after control, they make a comeback. We were going all the way back to Lijiang Tower. It wasn't convincing enough for us here at the desk. We wanted to see more out of the Goats, and this is exactly what we got. Big methodical tank play. We know that that's the composition that they came and loved to play, and they showed it here on Anubis defense, especially by way of Sits Graviton Surges coming through to set up Gator, who never felt the pressure more than a single second. But I got to continue to say it was all because Ikor. Ikor sitting there behind the tanks in a proper positioning, able to sustain his own self through proper positioning and helping out from Tensus Lucio, was able to find tons of biotic grenades, was able to shut down the healing of Dogmen, a 
a multitude of times and it always had the nano boost it seemed every other team fight to help gator get another earth shatter and just when you thought that dogman almost made it there to stall out the walk is too far and goats sitting cleanly walking into king's row and i mean just over and over they were able to just establish their dominance on that middle ground rotating those ultimates effectively again seeing that graviton come up twice in the same position effectively locking them down and they had to force that other position they had to look for that reposition on the outer right side from the defensive position to try and contest man to man on that middle high ground and they had an opportunity they were in a good spot but just couldn't finish it off yeah and we saw them try a multitude of areas to try to push through they never went through the upper mega pack area besides the first time when they got shut down they knew that the D diva from Arai was way too smart was way too clutch in the fact of shutting down the high ground so that way majesty could never get properly set up now as we're loading in here to king's row one of my personal favorite maps especially in the hybrid format here rich we're gonna end up seeing i can only imagine more on a play but it could end up swapping back to a previous uh, healer meta as well. It's going to could end up being Mercy Zenyatta, and that's going to be the fact as well. You can see Dogman, they're not playing around. Majesty can surely land a lot of good darts and biotic grenades. I'm interested to see how his Zenyatta with the Orbs of Destruction have held up in this current patch, especially when you know it's GOATS, right? got to land that huge Discord orb target. You got to run them over, but that's the whole point of GOATS. They're going to run this 3-3 composition, so you need to keep your front line alive. You need to be ready for this, so where they're ever going to be set up, they need to collapse on a target convincingly. Definitely. And I mean, you know, it's also going to be interesting to see how Chrono is going to play this Arisa. We've seen some great versatility on his tank role. So coming in with this on the defense, using that Arisa, which we do typically see on this first point, utilizing that high ground position in the back by the control point, giving some cover for the team. It will be interesting again to see how Goats is really going to be able to just steamroll through that and force them down from that high position. Yeah. And just hanging out up on this high ground, you can see Ice on the Widowmaker is going to have a hard time. I mean, Thread in the needle is an understatement, especially when you have to get through all the shielding and the tanks just to find Ecor. He's going to fall pretty low, needs to get a couple healing, maybe find a health back. But at the end of the day, it's going to be Ice just trying to work these angles and work the magic just to find any and any, if any squishy kills he possibly find. But take a look at Goat, so using the speed was just bouncing into the apartments. They're trying to claim the space and making Chrono Dota's Orisa just run and head for the hills. And I give them major credit. Dogman now responding so beautifully in their position. They are not getting overrun. They are playing this defensively in such a great way with that Junkrat doing so much damage by Saucy, already generating the rip tire as they have been forcing them into these tight corridors. And that tight corridor, <laughs> I mean, it, we, we would think it was probably a good play, just speed boosting your way into that smaller apartment area in that hallway. You got met by a junk rat and tons of grenades, and Saucy's going to be able to hang out with this Rip Tire momentarily. Probably going to be looking for a healer or two, especially Igor, who has the nano boost, but here it comes the Rip Tire. Seeing if they can try and tuck it behind the statue, wanting to claim a pick just over the wall, getting a little low. Ice getting a D-Mech in the follow-up. No kill, though, by the Riptire. It was still able to zone them away, though, preventing them from moving forward here. Definitely want that Riptire to come through in a little bit later of a time, probably when the entire team of Goats are already on the point itself. A big halt, however, from Chronodote is going to pull out Sid, who didn't have a personal bubble, and with a good cleanup, Sniper rifle shot from Ice and Saucy is going to take that Zarya well out of the fight. Goats now back to that proverbial drawing board on trying to figure out how do we even attack this? How do we even make it to the point? Because you can see Dogmen, they came to learn. They came to play. They have a junk rat. They're able to burst through all of that health and all the tankiness that Goats are trying to throw at them. Oh, and the Halt going to start separating their team. Once again, beautiful positioning here by Chrono to get that as they're going to now try and look for a flanking position on the low ground. Going to force out the Valkyrie, though. Swimmer now overhead trying to make sure that they can sustain through the healing as they look to contest now on the main ground. Getting a nice pick here. Majesty getting a kill with Chrono following up immediately as they're going to be staggered, starting to get picked off one by one as it will be a minute and 50 seconds to go with Goats now again, having to just again fall back. And like you said, look at that drawing board again. And that drawing board having to be brought back to good supercharger coming out from Chrono Dota as well it was uh, a very convincing ultimate so that way they gave more damage over to Ice and Kevin especially Majesty with proper discord orb targets are easy to collapse on though Saucy is over there with this aerial tactical denial that we know Junkrats love and play I mean you know all those grenades are just properly well thought he is timing every single one of those promptly now the dive is going to be able to come through on a ride nano boost to help him take that 1v1 against the Junkrat but Saucy he just runs away 
Now having another rip tire coming out by Saucy to see if they can get it immediately picked off though. The self-destruct on the high ground. They need to tuck away. Graviton going to be thrown out as well. Kevin getting locked down with a self-destruct in return. Seeing if they can zone them away. Getting into the back. Manages to get Sith as now it will be an Earth Shatter coming out as well. Knocking that Kevin Diva player down. Not going to get the other player though. It will be Chrono still sustaining through it. Not going to be able to exploit that. Even though those ultimates tried to gain them value, they lost out because they didn't have the follow-up. Yeah, and that follow-up needs to come through ever so quickly. They have been shaving down so much time, Dogmen, against the Goats, and now Sid is finally going to take a swap. The entire team, they're going to go over to this true dive. Lucio Zenyatta as their supports, as well as Zenith on the Brigetta. They're going to pull out the Rally, give Ikor a little bit more health there underneath the shielding for the Zenyatta, and now they're just looking for a proper target. Swimmer's just pulling out that Valkyrie, so a lot of healing coming out for the tanks and the defending team. Ice still getting a lot of shots to no harassment. Finally does get picked off. Rez gonna come out quickly as it will be the Riptire at least claiming the DMAC here as Kevin will also be DMAC. Even exchanges back and forth started to go in favor of Goats. They are no longer gonna have that on a play and switch and it was a great switch very last minute trying to keep them into this fight. Genji sit just doing a great job continuing to keep on this point as now Swimmer is just trying to survive using that last opportunity to keep Chrono alive as the overtime still continues to tick away. Two ticks looking for the third as they are finally going to to try and get back. Kevin now onto the point with the Diva, seeing if they can buy some more time to hopefully get the rest of the team there quickly, but it is a long walk between that street space as now Saucy looks to try and clean up all on their own. Riptire coming out, does claim the kill onto Tensa with the support, getting into the corner once again, buying a little bit of time, but isn't going to be enough here, and they managed to move this into the streets phase. This true die format that came through Gator, Arai, and Sid, they were able to find so much space and target availability that it gave Ikor just the proper time to land good orbs of destruction and to follow up on set damage as well. Going to be interested to see if Zenith ends up swapping off the Brigitte. Doesn't seem so. They're just going to try to keep the squad composition alive where the dive comes through of Gator, Arai, and Sit. And the back line is just healing from afar so that way Tensa can speed his team in to the fight and get a good amount of heals off the amp it up ability that Lucio has. Chrono Dota swapping over to the Reinhardt for the street space. Not going to be getting an Earth Shatter here momentarily, but it's Kevin who has a self-destruct needs to be looking to set it up. Sound barrier to lead the way as well here for Goats to try and turn the corner. Self-destruct from both sides, not claiming anything for Dogman, nor is it going to be for Goats either. Still trying to push forward a minute and 40 seconds, looking to get onto the high ground, trying to isolate them away. Kevin starting to fall back, needing to be careful. They're going to want to try and contest that as the aggression comes out by Gator. They've got three ultimates at their favor, soon to be four with Biz most likely going to try and use this rally here as they are going to reach this checkpoint with now Kevin starting to engage. It will be Chrono trying to aggress as well. Transcend, it's going to be forced now by the Zenyatta. Majesty continuing to do a Great job here keeping that team alive as Chrono now is a little bit out of position, trying to gain some assistance. Primal Rage now going to come out in the back by Gator, looking to force them away as they reach the checkpoint and now continue to try and have this go in their favor. Rally going to come out by Biz, and they're just going to look to clean this up right now. At the over-aggression coming through on Dive now, this is the new Reform Goats. They are not just a 3-3 composition that you knew and love and took into your own comp matches, friends. This is actually a Dive composition coming out. Sit has been playing wonderfully, being there with the Swift Strikes, getting the dash resets from our uh, Arai and Gator as well. You can see Zenith just keeping hit the rest of his team alive, allowing the entire team of uh, of Goats just continue to sustain themselves. The armor sitting underneath the shields for Ikor has not even budged. And Chrono trying to get the Earth Shatter, not gaining value, but now having the Graviton with the Biotic Grenade, able to claim so much there with it, combining it. We didn't see it earlier with that switch on the support, but now going to get it back. And that Bionic Grenade allowed it to claim a number of lives with that Graviton. Yeah, and this is going to be finally the payload halting in its spot, but just when the point actually captured, it actually didn't even stop on a single time. Maybe one speed bump before the capture of point C there for Goats. So now they're going to be able to sit pretty. Sit and Gator, they're going to go back over to this Ryan Zarya composition that has been helping them out so much, but Igor's going to be hanging out to this Transcendence, just waiting for the opportune moment to look for it. Probably think Saucy is nearing a Graviton Surge, but they can use it aggressively and get themselves back on the payload and set a Rise self-destruct up, and here it comes. Both of them on each side trying to claim a kill, not going to gain anything out of it. Iced already giving some great buffer here with the rally before this engage began, as now Icar is going to use that Transcendent, trying to get into the back to make sure that they can keep them alive. Biz getting an early pick, though, onto Swimmer. Needing to be careful, though. Tensa with that Bionic, gren bionic Grenade landing, and now needing to try and fall back. They do have this last opportunity to continue pushing 55 seconds to go, as Dogmen are now going to try and contest once again, seeing if they can push out. You do get the pressure now coming out with the Sound Barrier as well. Swimmer trying 
trying to hold them. Bionic grenade, or the Graviton is going to come out in the back line, trying to lock them onto this payload as they do continue to push. Chrono getting some aggression with that nano boost, starting to lock them down with the Earth Shatter and now managing to push them away. 35 seconds to go, and they're going to have to have a last regroup right now to try and contest. And this is going to be a good fight for Goat to be walking back into. If, if they can touch the point and go ahead and pop over time, they're going to be having a series of ultimates themselves, if not at the beginning of the fight, at the midway of the fight as well. Gator has been showing us how quickly he can get this Earth Shatter awry as well with that self-destruct, but Sits Graviton Surge is going to be the do-or-die situation. There's no defensive ultimate coming out for the side of Dogmen to shut it down inconclusively, but it's going to be Kevin with the defense matrix looking and ready and able to shut it down with the defense matrix. Starting to get some shielding here by Ice with the rally as they now get the graviton oh, no hole they were not able to gain anything out of it lost ultimate as now they're going to use it and trying to lock them down goats in a difficult position as now the self-destructs once again are going to be thrown onto that payload claiming one iced <laughs> is going to go down supports not available for that team as they will have one be picked off trying to keep them into the back a lot of harass forcing them into the corner goats are getting very close to claiming this as they do have 3.6 meters still to go great stun as well with the now nano boost coming out onto chrono trying to survive but gator getting the pick sound barrier coming out as well 1.1 meters still to go as they want to just force them off this overtime payload so that they can complete the round they want to push them away finally getting close it's still going to be this respawn advantage though swimmer doing a beautiful job continuing to jump in and off of this payload as they want to keep it going wrecking ball now going to come into the back line chrono once again switching but the earth shatter going to lock them down starting to push back getting the pin in the back line shutting down that hamster with the graviton now coming Another out five down? goats wanting to lock them down as it is going to be some more push self-destruct high overhead again needing to zone them away from it but kevin survives graviton now going to come out trying to lock down the team of goats they're going to see if they can pressure it back the respawn advantage still into their favor with just a few meters left to go needing to be careful here not wanting to lose these lives on the team of goats as that is going to be a dmac along with the follow-up by majesty as we do get oh, another man. earth shatter generated multiple times here on the front as they do continue to hold them back gator now being extremely aggressed upon as the wrecking ball uses that Beautiful payload rotation with that hook. Graviton to come out though. Not third? gonna have anybody to follow up as it will be 76 trying to get back. They are just not gonna let this go. They want to complete this round. Still keeping it in favor as a self-destruct once again comes out to look to lock them away as now, oh my goodness, Arai gonna get back on with the tracer. They want to still hold it. This is going on endlessly as the overtime is finally going to end with yeah. round one completed. Chrono Dota really staying alive for a decent while got those mines in a matter of minutes it almost seemed that last fight seemed to go on for years rich that is some crazy high level overwatch going on from both of these teams and particularly i gotta get props over to the dogman just when they seem to be down and out and really against the wall they're able to get back onto the point and really use those stall tactics always keeping one member on the team my a uh, good shout out as well would probably go to swimmer who actually got a right click the boop over to zenith off the edge that one boob kill that does live here on King's Row Rich was able to be found in Zenith, who was about 5% shy to a rally, could have actually been the favoring factor for Critical. goats to capture that point. Sit. We saw such high charge, able to get a multitude of Graviton Surges, same with Gator and those Earth Shatters, that it was it was definitely going to be that rally. If they were just one support ultimate shy. Maybe just a little lack of peeling towards the end. However, the tanks are really coming to life. I think Dogmen are really getting pushed against the wall here. They really are, and that was just so much aggression. Again, you saw them continuing to just use every ounce of energy to get back onto it. You saw Goat switch onto the Tracer. You saw the Wrecking Ball come out. Both of them trying to just, at that point, use a last-ditch effort just to stay on this point because they knew that the respawn advantage was going to come in. They had the opportunity to get back quickly, get back effectively, but to be honest, with how long that they were there, I commend the aggression by Goats being able to coordinate that focus onto the targets that they needed to try and pick them off one by one. And again, the ultimate generation there for both sides was unbelievable. We saw it so many times. I believe it was two uh, Earth Shatters on both sides at least, along with the grabs just continuing to rotate back, self-destructs landing on each other. And it was just quite a firework show here for both sides wanting to defend that point. Yeah, we love Overwatch for a multitude of reasons. We love the high levels that it brings, a very good showcasing, but more above, we know that you really like those particle dust effects. Come on, don't even lie. Don't True. even lie. Those, those Graviton surges are so beautiful. What other game do you get to see so many pretty lights flashing off in so many different areas of the map?
go ahead and ask Sif because he's going to be able to get three Graviton Surges uh, off in about a matter of a minute. And that's just going ahead and show you how good this tracking uh, or the tracking of this player in particular is. However, my biggest uh, my biggest factor coming in here for the attack of the Dogmen, I want to see Majesty back on to this Ana Was landing a lot of good Agreed. biotic grenades there onto the enemy of Gators. Just seems to be understanding where the enemy Ana is playing from Dogmen and just shielding it off promptly. It's just this little mini game that you see in between Reinhardt's and enemy Ana's, right? Where is that enemy Ana? Where do I need to shut down? How hard can I push this uh, push this attack here? Because I don't want to get anti. I don't want to die in a matter of seconds. Tanks are already having a hard enough time in this patch as it is. Agreed. And again, that biotic, that biotic grenade allowing them to just honestly switch back at the tail end of it. You saw it, that you had Majesty switch back wanting to utilize it. They had the initial changeover where they liked the Zenyatta. They did very well with it. But once they saw it come out from Icker, it allowed them to continue moving forward that they were just really, truly holding on there. And the switch by Majesty in the very tail end of it, that biotic grenade allowed them to gain so much out of it. And again, what we've seen prior, it was nice to see the switch, but Majesty Majesty knew at the end of it that I needed to go back. I had to go back to this Ana because it needed to happen. It was do or die in a multitude of situations. Even if you're not landing sleep darts 100% of the time, you're not landing sleep darts on ulting Genjis, you're not landing sleep darts on Sombers that are deep stealthing in your backline as well. Just mm -hmm. being there to shut down the healing of the enemy team and to amp up the healing of yours as well, not only helps out Ana and your tank line as well, but let's take a look at the rest of the composition that was being played as well. With Ice on the Brigetto, the way that Inspire works out, you're going to be able to help your tanks continue to push forward as well and going to be able to help Brigetta herself continue on healing her own end so that way she feels more comfortable in pushing into the enemy team as well and especially for swimmer all he has to do is just flick on the healing for just a single moment of time on that lucio and everybody can gain a certain burst of healing it is truly impeccable how much a biotic grenade is able to impact uh both these teams and again, you know, we saw such great play, like you said, from the Brigitte coming out on ice, having that preemptive shielding that allowed a lot of the damage that even if they were to get clipped by the self-destruct in the back, they were able to prevent it. And, you know, honestly, that timing was perfect. It worked out in their favor as a whole. Yeah, and that's uh, right there as uh, at the whole. I mean, like we've been seeing so many like stagger uh, pushes there, whether it was Anubis or, or even on uh, Li Jang Tower, we saw it on Gardens as well. And now, all the way over here in King's Row, this match is absolutely insanity. It has been going on for such a decent amount of time that none of these teams want to see the way of the road today. They don't want to go home empty handed, they want to show what their worth is, dog men included. I got to say, though, Goats, they really came to learn after their loss earlier today, Rich, against phase two. Mm -hmm. especially Gator just coming in, understanding how aggressive he can play against these harder teams, really keeping his team alive, just finding those proper charges and flame strikes to keep that ultimate cycling through. That's just good, uh, good team play altogether. It is. And, you know, to be honest, again, with the history that Ghosts has going into this, they're in the loser bracket. They're trying to claw their way back up to that opportunity they've got a lot riding on it and again now that they're in the loser bracket you know honestly they might have just had a reality check they're going to look at this and be like okay so we have to sit back and evaluate it and as you said you know with gator really learning where he is able to have that aggression how his supports are functioning around him as a whole allowing him to thrive in that front position and flourish as that aggressive frontline tank it's giving them so much opportunity here to truly contest against them and so hopefully that with that being known as they continue to push forward it'll allow them to turn this around to stay in this and continue persevering through it yeah, oh, absolutely. The winnable situation, however, will be for the favor of the Dogmen. If they can show us how hard they can push a payload after unlocking it, just like Goats did, they'll be able to steamroll themselves all the way to the capture point. And it's essentially capturing all three points here for Dogmen, but it's definitely doable. The way that they've been playing, the way that they've been uh, communicating all their ultimates and combining them as well, they can definitely do it here, Rich. It just comes down to goats. They've been learning, getting stronger as this day has gone on, especially as this match has gone on. We've seen Gator, Sit, and Arai take new heights and just landing huge ultimates and big ability cooldowns as well just to set their team up for success. And they really have. And honestly, too, it's been interesting to also see how 
surprisingly little that we've actually been able to get out of the Diva self-destruct. I mean, it's a great zoning mechanism as a tool moving forward, but these teams have been honestly responding to this ultimate position so very well, as often as we've seen it. A couple huge landings that we did see, a double or a triple, but you know, it, they're really not getting too much value, and everybody is extremely aware on both sides to continue doing this and moving forward, and, and again, just the ultimate economy on both sides has been so lively that they can just really honestly throw these time and time again to try and just gain some momentum here as a whole either on the attacking side or the defending side as well yeah absolutely and with that being said as well as we're dealing with a few technical difficulties don't worry we know that you enjoy looking at our wonderful faces behind <laughs> the beautiful voices that is rich rad and pokemon panda but as we're dealing with some technical issues here on the player side we're just trying to get everybody back inside the lobby so that way dog can complete their attack we're going to take a short break but we'll be right back in a moment's glance don't go anywhere with this match i 
like running through the pouring rain I felt like letting go of my mind I felt it coming with no ground to brace I think I just might be sleeping, sleeping. for you Getting by the fact that I don't need a reason to All righty, and thank you everyone for your patience as we do finally have the player back in for GOATS here as we did just have that brief moment. And I know that, Panda, you are just as excited as I am to get back into this after that last hold that we just saw. Here's the biggest thing about all these pauses. And once a pause actually occurs after a heavy momentum push like that, will one team get too comfortable? You know when your hands get warm and you're playing these games, and then you take a certain moment of time in between, and in, especially in the middle of a series just like that, your hands start to get cold. Your communication mm -hmm. starts suffering. You could be talking about puppy dogs. You could be talking about wheels of cheese. Whatever is your fancy tickle as it may be, it's going to be difficult walking back in here, and especially with the Rye and Gator who are having to come back after a certain amount of time. Goats themselves, they need to continue to hold strong. I want to see this momentum shift all the way through that they started picking up two maps ago here, Rich, and walking into their defense here of King's Row, not fixing what ha not fixing what ain't broke here. They're not going to change a single thing about their composition because it's worked out so well. But take a look at the attacking team. This triple tank dive, they try to make an outing of this on Temple of Anubis. It didn't work out all too well, but I'm interested to see because it does work a lot better here on King's Row. Especially with Majesty now coming in onto the Moira, iced on the Sombra, looking to get into the back, trying to get some early hack potential here, getting not seen here. So they do have that position. Now going to go quickly onto the Brigitte, follow up with the Wrecking Ball. Now a great engage to start with the beautiful Biotic Grenade here by the Ana from Iker, continuing to keep them alive and going to sustain on it. They almost got a first tick, manages to do it actually. They're going to keep holding onto this and now it's going to force Goats to have to aggress further than they need to right now. They're not in a comfortable position, trying to contest against it now and repositioning this team of dogmen back they managed to claim one tick at least on this first initial push and are going to look to regroup now need to take a certain moment of time that's how triple tank dive works create the space wrecking ball in pile drive out what's the dive target oh and the sleep through. dart though with the now coalescence going to be used it will be the minefield as well completely deleting Rye with the self-destruct dropping on the Graviton, claiming three with the DMEC. oh goodness me they were able to combine that beautifully and that's a solid push, even though they did manage to still get two takes out of that by Dogman. Orion sit with the Bigger Bang combo. We were speaking about particle effects before our, our inopportune break there. And we're getting just the lick of that there for the defensive ghost. They are playing so wonderfully so far. Ice is about to have a EMP walking in here. Saucy swapping over to the far without an any mercy to sustain or damage boost that damage is going to be hard if anybody's able to get a single lick of damage onto the fair in the sky there. But the Earth Shatter from Gator comes through, finds two. And they're going to try and follow up onto Kevin. Does get the DMEC. They managed to pull it off. Now going to have that Primal Rage being used by Chrono. Trying to contest against the Nano Boosted. Ryanheart on the front. Gator. But EMP now going to be unleashed by Ice. Can they follow up onto it? Forcing them away in the backside. Seeing if they can contest against it. They're looking to claim this point And now get very close to moving it into the street space. But now the Sound Barrier is going to prevent it. Moving forward. The Biotic Grenade now going to land here by Iker again. From Goats continuing to try and prevent them with this momentum. Starting to force them away. Once again, they are a sliver away from gaining this third tick. And now are going to be forced back. They cannot afford to lose a member right now. They need to keep this going. Losing a little bit 
bit of that percentage. Now gonna have the Rocket Barrage and the Self-Destruct as well. But a return coming up by Ori, getting a triple once again. And these are the Self-Destructs I was talking about earlier that we were lacking. And now we're getting them back with now a sliver left to go still. One minute and 30 seconds still trying to stay onto the point. Getting a D-Mech here once again onto Kevin. Now looking to follow up onto Chrono. They do have to try and use the short distance to get back an opportune time for Dogman to continue contesting against it. Reinhardt getting back into this Gator, joining with the rest of the team. It is going to be Sit now with the Zarya continuing to hold them back. EMP by Ice now going to lock them down once again. Kevin looking to turn it, and they managed to get it and move it into the streets phase. Not without a struggle, though, Rich. You can see Dogman having to dig so deep, pulling out so many ultimates and so many heroic plays coming through, both from Ice, Chrono, Dota, and even Kevin as well for the defense matrix to shut down as much healing as humanly possible on that Diva uh, in particular. Really struggled. For goats, however, they were standing so strong. Arai came to life on a multitude of self destructs. First comboed, second one, just vanilla 3k self destruct coming through from Arai. He's gonna have another one to combo with Sit, so they're trying to set up the play here. But a good sleep on the Sit Zarya is gonna stop that charge momentarily. Chronos hopping into the back, now gonna force out that Primal Rage as the Graviton is gonna be used as well, just by the bookshop around the corner. Saucy getting a beautiful early pick here onto Sit with that Rocket Barrage in the back as the Sound Barrier tries to give some defense. Shield, which was beautifully placed by Chrono to prevent that explosion as they're going to try and continue maintaining this payload. Gator getting a double with Saucy trying to return again. No mercy to assist them, but still doing a great job in the back, preventing that damage from coming in as they're gonna look to try and keep it contested. And just trying to inch their way that much further onto the point itself with the defending team of GOATs. They're just not going to give up any space for free. Ice with the final kill onto Gator will finalize this push around the bend of the boiler room. This payload goes. So now the dogmen are going to have a series of ultimates. No Graviton search for Ice on this Hanzo with the Dragon Strike. So it's going to have to come through and be huge. Kevin looking for his own Big Bang with the self-destruct of his own. But Majesty with the Nano Boost is probably going to give it over to Chrono Dota to finally create so much space that Ikor doesn't have any positioning to take to keep his tanks alive. Here's the Dragon Strike through the wall, trying to get some additional positioning with Chrono getting a double kill here and the Self-Destruct claiming two with the DMAC. Now it's going to be Dogman having that beautiful engage right now. Wonderful positioning, usage of the ultimates, locking them down and still being able to maintain that Rocket Barrage here as they're moving forward. What do you think they're going to have to do here, Panda, on Goat's defense? As they're rolling back out here, they're already taking the proper swaps to help themselves out. Saucy's getting a lot of good damage off, though they may not always be direct rockets. It will be difficult to find sight lines with that Widowmaker just going back into the spawn, calling out Justice Raining from absolutely out of nowhere and just giving up the Pharaoh Barrage, going to a Widowmaker himself. But Sid with the proper positioning already right there, shut down Ice. The resurrection from Swimmer will come through, but that's a big cooldown that's out of the way for 30 seconds. Self-destruct used again, trying to zone them away. Not going to claim the victory as now you're going to see Chrono be extremely hyper aggressive here on to sit, managing to do it and surviving with a fluid momentum to jump in, pick them off and jump right back out as now the Sound Mary is going to come out here on the defensive side. Goats trying to see if they can withstand the incoming damage, but Ice continuing to push forward. Now with the Nano Boost coming out by Kevin, trying to force them away. Arai getting very low in the back. No, he available trying to get out of there but isn't going to be able to do so and now they're going to be able to capitalize on this payload and this is where dogmen are at their scariest when they have all the momentum in the world they have two minutes to go ahead and push another 18 meters or so and they're going to be able to do so convincingly ice throwing out the dragon strike shutting down one door but the dive coming through from gator is going to have the prime rage needs to drop down on the point soon just to stall it out with the rest of his team Infra's coming out in the back by Sit, giving some vision. They know where their momentum is and they know where their place. So they do have the advantage of seeing how they're going to look to engage this. Needing to be careful, still trying to sustain. It is going to be Saucy getting the pick on to Sit though. So they do have that advantage, but now once again, starting to force them back. A minute and 44 seconds here. And you do see that change up working very well for Goats. Goats just trying to continue on this defensive rampage, if you will. Swimmer going ahead and going to resurrect Majesty. Another resurrection down for 30 seconds. Won't be back for a minute left in the time bank. But right with the self-destruct, we've been able to see how good this has been, even without the Graviton Surge as well. The one ultimate that Dogman need to be careful of is Ikor. Hanging back there with the Transcendence could end up being a defining factor. 
Self-destruct on the high ground, not gaining any value. Goat's going to use that on the front, though, seeing if they can claim one. Not going to do it, though. Kevin's actually going to be really healed in the back as the Dragon Strike now is going to come through. You do see the pressure. It's moving them and splitting their numbers with Chrono getting so aggressive with that Primal Rage in the back as the Valkyrie is going to be forced as well. No, almost actually having the Valkyrie. Correction, still continuing to push. Kevin getting the triple on that Diva, continuing to flourish as now the Nano Boost is going to come out onto Chrono. Looking to pick them off the switch now onto the Doompus, but immediately picked off by Saucy getting the triple, wanting to lock them down. And that's going to be it. A full push here by Dogman as it is now going to be a 2-2 two -to -two matchup. 2-2 two -two matchup. We're going to go our swinging into a game five here, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Dogman are down, but not without a count. Gator with another play of the game. This man's insane. Please. It's someone like nerf Gator. <laughs> every match. Every match. It seems to be. I mean, he is a playmaker for this team, and he's been working for a very long time with core members of this team, Tensa and Arai included. These three members have been working so long and work so well together and understand how space can be claimed and how to pounce on those opportunities of their targets. It just came up so short there in that moment to, uh, momentary time of that last attack. Dogman just able to show how strong of a Widowmaker they have in Iced. Chrono Dota, no slouch on top of that Winston as well. Always in that back line, right in Eker's face, not being able to land any orbs of destruction outside the Winston bubble as we are quick to load into Nepal here. And they want to get this underway. They are have both a fire under their butts right now, wanting to get into this <laughs> battle with 25 seconds as they're looking to assemble the teams here. And it's going to be interesting. Already going into this map, there's going to be a lot of environmental opportunity. And we've seen the Lucio. We've seen the Winston. Going to have the Diva. So much opportunity to see how they're going to utilize this moving forward, going into this first map of Nepal. Now, the thing about uh, Nepal and Shrine in particular, as we work our way into a uh, quick pause, just so some players can take a bio break, I totally, uh, I'd be lying to say I totally didn't take one in the middle of that break that we also had a little earlier there. It happens. We're human beings. Don't judge too hard. But with that being said as well, being on Shrine here, like you were saying, Rich, is that this is the boop eccentric map. We see Orissa's come out, and then when the Orissa doesn't work out and you need to recontest at the point, you get a Winston coming out there, Lucio's, Brigetta's. Mm -hmm. Even Roadhogs as well. There's so many opportunities on the heroes that you can there choose really from are. in Overwatch. That Sanctum is just such a spectacle to not only watch, but to play on as well. And it really does give that thrilling excitement for these teams. And again, you get that feeling inside. When you get a nice boop off the edge, whether it's even a single or a double, it's like, I just totally got you. I just outplayed you a tiny little bit. So even if I, let's say, lose this control point, I still claimed a little bit of a victory. But at this point, they do have to focus on that victory because they are going to pick as much as they can to benefit them, even with this environmental. And I'm really interested to see the overall composition that they're, they are going to use moving into this. Yeah, and walking into Sanctum, what you typically see, especially is two is teams taking two different routes, right? If it's Dogmen, they've been showing showcasing this heavy dive eccentric team around the wrecking ball with Chrono Dota on the Winston and Kevin on the Diva. But on the other side, four goats, they've just been playing to the meta. They've been wanting to stay tried and true to what heroes are really strong right now, whether that be uh, a true dive with Sit on the Genji. Or if they're going to end up just sticking Gator onto the Winston or Reinhardt himself, we haven't really seen much Arisa play outside of Chrono Dota that one time on defense for Anubis. True. So I'm excited and interested myself personally to see what tank matchups we, we get to see here on Sanctum. And like you said, there is that opportunity for the Roadhog, but I don't think we would see that coming into this. Again, with the types of plays that we've been coming across, you're not going to, I feel, see that type of, you know, combination of players. Maybe the Orisa, as you said, we did see a little bit of a comfort pick there on that initial position. They played it beautifully, too. Their honest position and their withdrawal from knowing where the fight was going to be to give them a lot of space and isolate the team of goats benefited them a lot. So here, even, you know, with this huge environmental position on the right hand side as either team or left hand side depending upon which side you're coming from they're going to really want to try and force themselves against that wall taking that back position where you can drop down secure that that doorway on both sides and try to potentially move forward and get a nice pressure on that outer wall yeah, that outer wall is absolutely a pinnacle. And you see most teams always pushing to the pillar side because it's just an open sideline for Junkrats, Orissas, or mm -hmm. any hit scan that you want to take out as well to set up any dive. Uh, but we haven't really been seeing too many of those uh, those heroes from Overwatch being played out from both these teams until just last map of King's Row. We saw Ice coming out against the Widowmaker of Sit. To no avail, uh, getting out sniped Sit, having a hard time in that department. More of a projectile specialist, if you ask me personally. True. But coming out for the side of uh, of goats in particular, let's not forget that their main projectile DPS player, their 
uh, and and their hit scan, if you will. The Bustio being out of this match could be a huge impact coming into Sanctum and Nepal altogether. Let's not forget, though, Rich, as a overarching of this entire match so far, is that Li Zhang Tower did go over two dogmen. Now we're back on control, and where kills do matter to sway the point in your favor, can dogmen do it again as we're out of our pause and we're finally back loading into Sanctum? And, you know, just a to touch on that, that is very true. They did have the initial victory go in favor of Dogman and having that control point comfort. They did still have a good challenge, though. Goats did not just let it happen idly. It was a 1-1 going into that third round for Li Zhang. So we will see if they can potentially do that here. But with a little bit more of that environment opportunity, I think that, again, that can still sway it. Outside of gardens, of course, in Li Zhang, there's still that environmental opportunity. But there's a lot of walls to prevent it. As long as you're aware of the positioning, you can't gain as much out of it. But here, there's such an open space so you know with this control point activated in 30 seconds we'll see how they get onto the point yeah and it's going to be exactly what we were speculating on it's going to be a true dive coming out but that's in yada lucio regetta from the goats has been working out so strongly for them so also needs to be careful on where this dive ends up coming through as well as chrono dota and kevin not the sustainability that they need but if majesty's in the proper setup it can come through as see wrecking ball just coming in and just absolutely slamming down a is gonna fall to his death immediately and that was a cat and mouse game, getting an early pick on Arai, chasing them around this arena as they continue to try and push. Now rotating onto the point as it becomes active. Almost getting a boop here onto the back line of Gator, using that jump reset to make sure that they can sustain it as the numbers advantage is still in favor of Goats. They have the numbers advantage, five versus four, trying to contest as they're looking to force them away. Nobody's still gonna sustain that point though. Trying to turn it back around, Kevin gonna look to harass. Swimmers on the high ground as well, just going back and forth, looking for those kills as Goats is gonna manage to claim at first and look to try and force back dogmen to really keep this point active for quite some time for the percentile uh diva kevin went to go jump jet off the point momentarily but it was just that little it a bit of time that actually swayed the point in the capture over to uh to the goats for the first time and you can see gator just trying to get back out with his life will get stalled and stuck and knocked back by saucy so now you can see dogman coming back without using any ultimates well they did use the sound barrier for sure but now they're about to have five ultimates into this next team fight and sit just trying to stagger as much as he can just trying to get as much control percent as possible and they got just under a third of it they did a good job early on that pick that biotic grenade able to gain a lot out of it towards the end locking down the support no healing coming out from them as they continue to try and stall with again now 10 percent and climbing for dogman and dogman are going to have to use these ultimates very methodically not only for the mines coming out from the wrecking ball of saucy as he's coming back in nano boost and everything a big pile driver finds ecor immediately and they're going to try and take out those supports quickly. You do see the follow-up here by <laughs> the entire team cleaning them out of that corridor. That lineup for the nano-boosted pile drive around the corner was beautifully done by Saucy. And it was only the nano boost that was used that time by Majesty. He's been yet to feel any of that pressure that we've been talking about in previous maps here in this matchup and concluded. The rally here by Zenith is going to help out Sid pull out this Dragon Blade, but he needs to get the kills off. He's just chasing for Swimmer. We'll find him in the end. And the minefield going to be able to at least claim one, but too much damage, I think, has already been done. Goats has been managing to get into the back line, taking out one with the Dragon Blade, following up onto Majesty as Saucy will get pressed off the edge. No avail to survive. And now it's going to be 35% inclining here for Goats. And Saucy just going ahead and just rolling off the edge there, not swapping off the Wrecking Ball as well. They like this triple tank attack that they're going to end up having to against themselves. They're going to have another sound barrier to help themselves in the end, but Gator about to have that Primal Rage. is going to probably looking for a big Primal Raging opportunity for a ride to drop that self-destruct. Transcend, it's now going to come out in the back since they did see the aggression by Saucy. Jumping in the back line, now going to have that follow-up though. Iker going down by Swimmer, a great boop here coming off for the kill. As now the Nano Boost is going to come out onto Chrono, trying to get some aggression. Self-Destruct now overhead, wanting to claim a kill. Does manage to get Chrono, not able to get back into that barrier quick enough to try and prevent that damage from coming in as it's 70% and climbing. Trying to transition, they're locking them down in this front position. And now they're going to have to fall back to their spawn to try and regroup as the aggression comes out by Goats. The Blade and the Self-Destruct from Sid and Arai, respectively, play out so well together. Uh, just to give you a quick rundown, once you're trying to get out of the, L, uh, the line of sight for the Diva Bomb, you're right in a giant cluster for Sid to come in with the Dragon Blade, so you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place, or a nuclear bomb and a ninja sword, if you will.
Seeing if they can get back in time. 95% sound barrier going to come out. Swimmer is going to get there to make sure that they can secure it. The EMP coming out by Ice getting very low. Primal Rage unleashing so many ultimates along with Saucy now using the minefield to prevent them from getting back. Taking a lot of damage here. Primal Rage is going to be now used to get that kill onto Iker. Getting another follow-up. Ice doing a great job isolating these supports in the corner with Saucy harassing as well. Starting to switch it back. Overtime still active. Self-Destruct going to come out wanting to get the kill and does get two. Kevin claims both. Both members is going to be both Biz along with Arai, and that will be a switch over at 60% in climbing. Now, you can see Dogman, they need to set themselves up using any sort of resource they possibly can. Majesty falling is not where you want to be because you can see Goats are on a full dive status outside of Igor, but he has Tensa to speed boost him into the fight at a moment's notice. With the rally, they're going to look to take this point convincingly. Sip pulling out the Dragon Blade, looking to take this map and they want to get that extra damage since they are still tightly clustered, getting a lot of damage in the back line, but not finding the kill. Pile Driver going to come out once again by the Wrecking Ball from Saucy in the back, getting an assistance here by the healers to keep that fluing, uh, flowing with the self-destruct high overhead, zoning them away. Not going to gain anything out of it as it's now going to still be the 99% in overtime for Goats. Trying to keep this going against 77. They need to get on this to try and contest it as now Majesty manages to get that Coalescence in time. Starting to pressure on this point with that healing and damage against the Primal Rage Gator who's consistently knocking Majesty away. Not going to be able to sustain it. One member still trying to stay on this point as it's Majesty along with Swimmer literally tucking into that window, just trying to buy some time. But Tensa getting the boof, claiming the kill of both Saucy and Kevin, trying to maintain it here. EMP overhead. Dragon Blade going to come out again by Sid to try and push them away. Gator, ooh, that's going to be a final kill here for Goats to take an entire team kill and claim 100 to 77 on this first map of Nepal. Gator being the man that Goats absolutely needs him to be absolutely everywhere at once, just flattening everybody with his leaps and finding a way to use that Primal Rage very effectively, getting Majesty out of the fight, shutting down all of the healing that Dogman had to offer. Saucy was unable to sustain himself on the point, and Swimmer, just when you thought that that little antic up in the window was going to be able to keep himself going and keeping the point alive, it was just not enough. Very unfortunate to see. Yeah, well, we're loading over here to village here, Rich. Everything could be changed as it's going to be mirror compositions across the board. We say that, but there is one in particular hero that is different. Majesty on the Ana versus Ikor, who was on the Moira now. It's a true mirror composition fight. And it's really going to, I think, come down again to those support plays, making sure that they can sustain these front lines and allow them to have that first initial pick. Once it starts going downhill, it will be in their benefit. 15 seconds until this control point does become active as they're looking to start engaging now with both Reinhardt's leading the way. Charge going to come out with a sleep dart as well, trying to, again, get that early pick in the back to isolate one member out of the fight. Going to still pressure them off, having the advantage inside of Goats as they do have this still position advantage. But now Chrono getting the pick on the Sith, managing to follow it up biotic grenade needing to land in the back to give them some value here where they still continue to contest as dogman is so close to claiming it still trying to hold them in the back again biotic grenade able to land onto brig and the reinhardt continuing to pressure them back for this team of goats with the rally now it's going to come out to give them some defense they may have the opportunity but kevin does have the self-destruct can they tuck it in there in time too much damage has already been done here by goats so they are going to have to force themselves back and really just look to find an opportunity to contest again the graviton surge came through from saucy but it immediately got eaten up by a ride that was such a heads up play by the diva player from goats that you just can't go without saying it we'll be looking to get a new mech here momentarily but it really shut down the push from dogmen all included they're gonna have a five pack of ultimates walking in here they just need to find the proper push and having that sustain of armor walking in you can see goats just not wanting any of it they're just backing up just waiting for a ride to get back into the mech and having the self-destruct at the ready ice generating a lot of armor here to the earth shatter is going to be used on so much out of it from either end as a by the Biotic Grenade in the back from both teams again, using that Biotic Grenade to lock them down for preventing the healing. Arai being stuck to the side with a Sleep Dart taking a nap, while another grenade hits on this team of goats again, but nobody there to follow up on it. And again, you saw the Biotic Grenade land, and they followed up on it immediately for goats, and Dogman, was it was already too late. Too many were taken out. 50% more here, Rich. 50% of this control meter needs to be built for goats, and they're going to walk away here with a victory, and they're going to be going on to their next fight for the trials position in the spot. Gator is holding on to the self-destruct. Sit's about to have a Graviton Surge, probably setting up this bigger bang combo. We've seen it before, and I definitely want to see it again. Trying to see if they can find that opportunity, but it will be an Earth Shatter getting enough with the self-destruct. No, steal the... 
Saucy with it, looking to again force them back at 70%. Cleaning house once again. Goats in a beautiful position to continue moving on in this overall as they need to hold one last attempt here by Dogmen. Dogmen just trying to reach down deep. They're trying to figure out what they can possibly do. Tensions are rising. Action is coming. And Saucy needs to find something huge with this Graviton Surge walking in. Maybe a bigger bang combo within their own right. Majesty needs to stay alive. It needs to land this Nano Boost onto somebody promptly as they're just speeding their way onto the point. 8% left. The Graviton coming in, self-destruct from behind, repositioning, but it will still land! It's gonna be a triple kill followed by the DMAC. Kevin turning it around here in the overtime as now they look to try and hold it to contest against GOATS. And that's gonna be a very economic victory there for GOATS. Uh, they did get it up to 99%, so one more team fight victory for GOATS is going to be the team uh, team fight victory, or the, uh, the the map victory, rather. I'm just such a loss for words because this is such a fast-paced matchup. GOATS taking the high ground here, just setting themselves up around Ecor, just looking for the proper Nano Boost target. But Gator, we've seen these shatters momentarily. It has been huge in the past. He shuts down the Nano Boost Reinhardt alone. And the Biotic Grenade following up here on to Chrono, getting that frontline tank, turning it back around, and now they're gonna have to swivel to get back onto this point. Still keeping it into the overtime, you do see Ice pushing along with Swiver in the back. They do still manage to turn it back around. They're forcing him out of the point. Gator's now gonna be on the front trying to contest, but the sound barrier coming out by Swimmer. Looking to keep them alive, giving them some defense. Here comes the Graviton now by Gators to continue holding strong with the Earth Shatter in return, seeing if they can push them away. Chrono getting back into the fight here to buy some time. They want to switch this back this last opportunity in return now for Gator, trying to keep them going. The Nano Boost as well. Onto the Wrecking Ball. Saucy, again, just trying to buy some time right now. They have to buy as much as possible with the Bionic Grenade laughing, landing now. But that's going to be it! They managed to get them off! Goats claims the victory here and gets 3-2 to two over Dogmen! When their backs are against the wall is when the goats play their best. Even when they're down one member, they're able to create so many opportunities for themselves get the map fix, map score victories, and force the dogmen out and continue on their fight through the loser's bracket. Goats showing how high level of play they are known for and why there are two times open division victors sit with the play of the game, stealing it from Gator that time, but really good play coming out from Goats in particular today, learning as they're going along and ending up taking that victory over Dogman. That was not an easy matchup. I can only imagine no. four goats, but they stuck to it. They stuck to their guns and they really came out strong. Yeah, that is unbelievable and i give them major props just like you said they pulled through they persevered through it they came back on that second control map showing the dominance that they lacked in the first round of Li Zhang tower they were able to pull it out a 2-2 into that final map was critical for them to really keep this going already being a two season winner in the past they want to keep this up they don't want to get pushed out of this and they're going to continue moving forward panda and i'm literally I cannot wait for this next opportunity to watch them play again. They're an exciting bunch to definitely watch and to, to cast as well and to uh, to truly enjoy Gator's uh, continuous growth and play as a player throughout the entire day. But I can tell you somebody that you all are probably missing, ladies and gentlemen, somebody that can give you a little further breaking down of what we just witnessed all through the five maps. It's actually our desk. So Lemon, Herix, and Frito, why you go ahead and take it away, y'all? Welcome back. We are holding on to our seats. I was not kidding when I said this was going to be the hypest match of Open Division, and it proved to be one of the best. Game 5, GOATS taking it all. They survived through loser's bracket. Unfortunately, this will be the end of the Path to Pro for Dogman, at least for this season. But, boys, we didn't get a halftime, so we get about five maps to discuss, I'm going to start with you, Frito. We talked about the star DPS player from Bustio or of Bustio missing. What sort of an impact did that have at the end of the series? Did Biz live up to expectations? Well, definitely. I think on the Brigida, that was definitely coming clutch and something that I think started to evolve over this series. And I think it's a major thing that we want to talk about for GOATS, where they started to get the grips and really develop their style of play and what they were sort of forced into playing without Bustio. I was a little bit worried having Sit play more of the Zarya, which is normally what you would see Bustio on. And it was sort of um, boom or bust in that department at some some points where the Gravitons weren't necessarily there. Mechanically played all right, but I hope that even they can get Bustio back tomorrow because this team could look even better because they survived one heck of a brawl today without him. 
And Herix, what did you, I mean, we discussed a sit and Bustio, Zarya sit onto that Zarya. I mean, I think it was almost obvious missing now Bustio. You had to play more of this 303. Let's get into the execution, Herix. With the execution of the 303 with the Ana, did you see an improvement of GOATs from their previous match to this series and throughout the maps as they moved on? I think Frito highlighted a key word there, and it's it's evolution because that's what we that's exactly what we saw. We saw a clean progression from the start of this to the end. Where at the beginning, uh, from the support uh, POV, certainly yes. I mean, it wasn't the best. I would say we saw goats playing with Anna instead of Mora. I think that was a good adaptation. That was a good adjustment from their last series where they struggled in that department. They certainly started to play better right off the bat. But it was that evolution where we started to see. Uh, like over time, Ikor really kind of fell into a, a rhythm a little bit. And, and that's where we started seeing them come ahead. They started getting that lead, getting that advantage where it wasn't Majesty taking over in a lot of those matchups. Um, but I think the, like the keyword absolutely is going to be evolution while we're talking about this matchup. Well, the supports really stood out to you. Now, I think on the desk, we've been discussing the differences in the tanks. Frito, at the start of the series, it felt more of a Chrono Dota game. Like, he was very superior over Gator, but as the series progressed, it felt that Gator was actually in a one-to-one -one matchup, if not performing better than Chrono Dota. I think a lot of times when you watch a tank like Gator, he'll go for some plays that are going to fail. And that's just by design. <laughs> you Sometimes you have to do the double reverse psychology to outplay yourself sometimes to even sometimes have a chance of outsmarting your opponent. So eventually by the end of Nepal, I would say, after all the maps were played, Gator eventually hit the, the, the more tallies in the insane Reinhardt plays department. Whereas at the start, it felt like Gator uh, was kind of swinging and missing a few times, but especially on holding the point there, either earth shattering out of gravitons, he was able to find enough big plays and uh, grind out this series. And I think a lot of that is actually due to the evolution that we saw as well, too, because at the, at the beginning, obviously, some of the other fixtures of the composition, Zarya and Brigitte, which are probably the most pivotal for a Reinhardt to actually play well, weren't quite up to par in terms of what Goats is used to playing around. So yes, you know, we saw some Gator moves that weren't, really that solid he didn't have the backup you look at you know some of the setups that we saw on the other side dogman having that really nice setup where they go for the earth shatter and then actually go for the uh shield bash right after and that's a big like quick opening that they can take advantage of that earth shatter goes through uh and really good stuff that we saw from them initially but again that ev evolution happened things started to kind of get back in stride we started seeing a lot better stuff from sit where he was able to be a little bit more consistent um, and then we also saw Biz really kind of finding a place for himself as well on the brig where he didn't really swap off of it. So we had a lot of time to evolve there. So, and that's, that's when we saw Gator actually coming up clutch a lot more, especially on that last map where he really popped off. Exactly. You can contrast Lijong Tower and then Nepal and how a dogman did take that two to one at the start. And you would think in the goats versus goats or 303 versus 303, dogman started off stronger, but the evolution and the improvement of goats. Then you look at Nepal and it was a completely, I feel like a completely different team that we saw from goats. Gator, you know, still whiffing these shatters or more of these zoning shatters as the desk called it. But as a team, the coordination definitely improved. But let's Let's go on the topic of ult usage because when you have these mirror compositions, it's all about the execution and how you use these ultimates. Frito, did you see a difference in ult usage as the series progressed? Overall, over the course of five maps, I would say that Dogman actually required perfect setup more. So on screen, it might look like some cases that Goats is rushing ultimates that they didn't need to use, but the problem is for Dogman anyway, that Goats is more comfortable in the clutch ultimates, which eventually starts to grind out these games and bring it back. Because, especially on Village there, we saw that Dogman had the lead, but Gator, even down a man and looking to be losing the fight, pulls out a shatter that pulls back the entire round. And that's really where you start to kind of put your foot down and say, no, we are the better team. We're willing to make these clutch plays, which come out of big risks. So when it looks... Bad, it looks really bad, but when it looks good, it wins the whole series for you.
And not only are they that clutch, but on top of that, they also just play their composition well. Remember, this is named after their team. So there's a reason why that is the case. I mean, they have the experience, they have the know-how. And when they're on defense, not only are they making those clutch plays where you do see that like diva bomb come through and it's a big wipe and everything, but they also know how to sustain on a point fight on objectives and pull the uh, pull the time out play the time game play the clock as much as possible and that gives them advantages where they can actually have opportunities to be clutch later on I definitely agree that at the start, it seemed that goats were more reactive with their ultimates when they thought it was winnable. They would throw out an ultimate like a grab or a shatter, and it wouldn't sometimes get anybody. Or it's, I think we talked about the desk. It's either all or nothing. Either it was a huge grab with everybody in it, or a huge shatter that hits everybody, or it, it, there was nobody in the grab, and it was completely whiffed. But then as the series progressed, it felt, felt like goats were getting more structured. They're taking it more seriously, especially the losers bracket. There is not really room for mistakes. There is no other bracket you're dropping to your playoff lives are on the line where goats miraculously pull off the game five and they will stay alive to move on to face arctic gg in the semis well of course i've already mentioned that uh dogmen will unfortunately drop out but they had an amazing run and i want to ask you boys was there what was your mvp of this match a player that stood out to you let's start with you herix a uh, player that stood out to me um it's, it's a tough call because we saw a lot of good things from a lot of different uh, players all at different moments in the matchup. I definitely think that there were some good moments uh, that started out with Chrono Dota, so I'm probably going to have to highlight him. I think that he showed a capacity uh, to be able to not only, you know, get in there and be aggressive and make that space that he was it was kind of necessary for his team to make but he was also really good at knowing when to disengage when fights were lost when to pull back when to peel for his teammates um so i think honestly the the cerebral game i think he was right up there yes he lost out in the end uh, to gator but i think that might have been more about just the fatigue and and everything just going awry <laughs> part of the pun that was probably made a hundred times already but you know, about halfway through. Um, but prior to that, I'm going to say Chrono Dota is the guy to keep your eye on after this one. Frida, and, how about you? And for me, I, I don't know if we know who the main shot caller, if, even if there is one for goats, but I'm going to say probably it's Gator. And despite maybe the play going about 50-50 a lot of the time, I think the mental game is really where goats shined today because holding first on Anubis A with a goats defense, 3-3 uh, three, three comp, I don't think happens very often. I can't remember the last time I've seen it, if I've ever seen it. In many cases here, they just basically came out swinging, no pun intended with the Reinhardt play, but they were willing to take risks the entire series. And they know that they've been to the top of open division before. They played comfortable. And it seemed as the series went on, Dogman kind of got in their shell a little bit in a few times where, especially on Anubis, or if we look onto this last map, it, it's... A very far cry away from where they were at calm cool and composed in Li Zhang. so the emotional game for me wins out for goats and whoever's in charge of shot calling because they just pedal to the metal uh put it on the gas and weren't willing to give up <laughs> you guys were a big fan of the reinhardt's the main tanks i was a very big fan of the off tanks especially a, a rye or a kalug from goats and kevin I think I preferred Kevin from Dogman. It, just the real path to pro story, how I think it was Jane that found him through open tries from Team Canada, really stepping up as the off-tank player there, and now coming into the open division where he's in playoffs with a big chance. Well, now at the end, this will end here, but Kevin really standing out, coming out of nowhere, hitting these huge bombs throughout these series, and even Kalug. Uh, standing out in that role as well. We're a big fan of the tanks here, but I think this will wrap up our broadcast GG desk. If you want to see the continuation of GOATs, will they be uh, a three-time Open Division season winner? You're going to have to find out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern as they will be facing Arctic GG and other losers bracket matches and other matches that we're going to be concluding tomorrow. But... The Overwatch action isn't over today, folks. We've got Australia. Their Open Division playoffs are continuing, I believe, in the next hour or two. So if you want to check out another region, what is what is Australia really made of? They're about to show you in about an hour or two. We're going to be going through the loser's bracket and also finishing off the grand finals. But we appreciate you viewers at home and all the fans cheering on goats, cheering on Dogman. We're going to see you guys in a little bit for Australia playoffs.